Only one win separates Miles from a third consecutive trip to the SIAC championship game. Well, we do. Today, the Golden Bears host arch rival Tuskegee, which hosts to play the role of spoiler today. From Sloan Alumni Stadium in Fairfield, Alabama, it's the 65th meeting between the Golden Bears and the Golden Tigers. The SIAC standings are very simple. Albany State has already clinched the Eastern Division Championship. All eyes are on the West today as Miles, Kentucky State, and Lane all have a chance to win the championship here today. Hello, everyone. I'm Kamari Darrington along with Sylvester Williams. And Sylvester, of course, is a big day for Miles College, a familiar day for Miles College because, again, they have a chance to beat the arch rival for the SIAC West. A big day for Miles, but a familiar day for Miles. One more time, this is the ninth year in a row that the SIAC title is on the line. If they win on the last day, they'll make it to the championship game, or in years past, they won the championship. So it's a big day, but it's a familiar day for Miles College. All right, Sylvester, this game features two outstanding running backs for Tuskegee. They have Avante Patterson, one of the top rushers in the SIAC. He is one of the runners in the SIAC that you love to watch. This guy, you see it on the stats, 774 yards, nine touchdowns. He's fourth in the SIAC. He can run past you, he can run around you, or he can run through you. He is one of the most complete backs you have in the SIAC. All right, for Miles College, they have the SIAC's leading rusher in Dante Edwards, the junior. Dante is an impressive back, and I'm going to tell you how impressive this guy is. Now, he got hurt the first game of the year, but he still managed to lead the conference in rushing. So that shows you what type of back he is. And imagine if he didn't suffer that little mishap to start the year off. He is a special back. We should see two exciting running backs out here tonight. All right, so Tuskegee will try to snap a two-game losing streak to Miles. Miles is headed for the SIAC championship. It's coming up next right here on ESPN. love to play academy sports and outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your academy store As a global bank, our game plan is to help clients manage their money. We're a team of challengers, thinkers, and go-getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, SIAC, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. Since 1837, historically black colleges and universities have been fulfilling their purpose to educate and empower. Since 2009, the Home Depot's Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant Program has also been powered by a purpose to update, upgrade, and uplift HBCU campuses. Today, 44 million votes, $4.1 million, and 147 grants later, we remain inspired by the people, the passion, and the power of HBCUs to continue our purpose. Learn more at retoolyourschools.com. Tuskegee and Miles getting set to take each other on once again for the 65th time. Tuskegee with a 48-16 advantage in the all-time series, but Miles has won the last two. Head coach for Tuskegee's Willie Slater, his 16th season with the Golden Tigers, 8-6 against Miles all-time. His 123 wins are second all-time at Tuskegee. And on the other side, Reginald Ruffin in his 11th season with the Golden Bears, four-time SIAC champion. And he's won the SIAC West title five times. He has 64 and 43 at Miles, a 4 and 5 record against Tuskegee. Well, Sylvester, as we get ready to start this game, what are your keys early on for this game? 
I think for both teams, the keys to the game is stop the run. You have two you have two teams who love to run the ball, who love to pound the ball, three yards cloud of dust. They love to keep it on the ground. So both teams, their defense has to step up, and they have to do what we call man up and stop the run. I would rather get beat by the quarterbacks on the teams than get, than get beat by the running backs this game. All right, got Jamal Pritchard back deep for Tuskegee as Miles will get ready to kick it off. Jackson Spradlin will do the kicking duties. The junior from Dora, Alabama. 5'9", 190-pound junior. Tuskegee and Miles for the 65th time. We are underway from Fairfield. And Pritchard will take it from the six-yard line. He'll come straight up the middle and uh, falls forward towards the 22-yard line. And that is where Tuskegee will start its first offensive possession of the game. Of course, we've talked about Avanti Patterson, the, uh, the running back, uh, the quarterback for Tuskegee is going to be number two, Bryson Williams. 6'3", 193-pound sophomore from Lithonia, Georgia. Bryson had a heck of a game last week, man. He threw for 342 yards, two touchdowns. Man, what a game for Bryson, putting it in the air. Young sophomore, too. Uh, well, the first time that Tuskegee's had a 300-yard passer in three years this is the most that Tuskegee has thrown for in three years. So first and 10 from the 22-yard line. And Bryson Williams will keep it himself and go straight up the middle, breaking tackles, and down the middle he goes. Bryson Williams in the open field. One man left to beat. Inside the 20, he will go all the way on the first play from Strimmage. Touchdown, Tuskegee, 78 yards. What a start for the Golden Tigers. Now that's how you come out and set the tone. Now Bryson's going to get all the credit for that touchdown run, but you got to give it to the big guys up front. If you saw that hole that they created through the middle, man, my old behind could have got out there. I might have gained a couple of yards out of that. Look at, him, look at those big linemen come down there and just clear out the way. His lead running back clears out the way, and he makes a man miss, and it's just off to the races, man. I love this see that man just big big grinding big guys up front clearing out the way for that back and he's just turning the speed on straight down the field what's that 70 78 yards 78 yards and uh, Bryson Williams getting into the end zone for the first time this season what a run for uh, Bryson Williams an extra point coming up here from Arnis Hushkick and we've got whistles let's find out what's going on here yeah, I guess Tuskegee is letting it be known early. It's going to be no easy walk to the championship game. You know, you're going to have to earn it today. You're not kidding. Hey, where you talking about two? On the try, five yard, repeat the try. So a penalty against Tuskegee. So they'll move him back five yards and they'll try it again. So Sylvester, uh, you, you come in here, you don't really have much to play but for pride. And you, the first play from scrimmage, you score a touchdown and really take the crowd out of the game early on. No, no. Well. Extra point is on the way, and it is good. So 7 nothing Tuskegee already on top of Miles College. Let's take another look at the touchdown as Williams, uh, not much fancy. He fakes it to the, to the, to the back, Terry Bryant. And then breaks one tackle, and that was it. There was no safe. There was nobody left to, to stop him. And that's the thing about when you run this option run, and everybody when you play man defense, it's nobody over the top to help out. That safety isn't, isn't back there anymore. If he misses that tackle, that's it. That is it. It's just athlete versus athlete, and the fastest guy is going to win. You know, you spoke earlier. You spoke earlier about not having much to play for. I had an old coach. He would always tell me that eye in the sky is always on. Right. Somebody's always looking. You, this game might not mean much towards your season, towards you going advancing to the playoffs or anything like that. But you have somebody out there scouting you. Somebody's watching to see what are you going to do yourself. Eh? Hey. Tuskegee says, "Hey, we still have some fight left in us." No question about it. You know, Willie Slater, he always has his team prepared to play no matter what the situation is. And you can see right off the bat, they get a big, big touchdown from Bryson Williams. So now Miles will have to try to get it right back. They've got my Darius Trujillo back deep. And he'll, that ball will go into the end zone for a touchback. And the ball will come out to the 25-yard line. Quarterback for Miles is Claude Newell III, the redshirt junior from Birmingham, Alabama. 
so far this season, completing 56% of his passes. Just under 1,000 yards for eight touchdowns, just one interception on the season. You know, let's see how they respond. You know, you get punched in the mouth. Let's be honest, they just got punched in the mouth. Let's see how Miles responds. See how the Golden Bears respond to getting punched in the mouth. Well, all these teams have faced so much adversity <laughs> the last two years, so I'm sure that they are used to it. As you see, Dante Edwards in the backfield along with Newell on this first and ten. And off the play fake, Newell going down the middle. Has a man open. It's caught. Oh, oh my. That's Chris Brown, and he will stroll into the zone. Two plays, two touchdowns. Holy Toledo. We've got some fireworks early in Fairfield. Look at here, man. You know, before the game, we sat down and talked. We said, man, these guys are going to be running the ball back and forth. You know, everybody's carrying the ball. And look at explosive two plays. The first one, a 78-yard run. Now you got a 70-yard pass down the field, man. We hadn't played what we played, what, uh, 30 seconds of actual game time? 28 seconds in. A 78-yard run by Williams. A 75-yard touchdown reception by Chris Brown. And if this is any indication, we are in for a long afternoon. Extra point is up, and it is no good. So that one missed by Spradlin. And so each team has a touchdown. Chris Brown, 75 yards from Newell. Tuskegee up by a point, 28 seconds in. Back to Fairfield, some early fireworks, Sylvester. Both sides make big touchdowns. I'm telling you, the defensive bus hadn't showed up yet, man. <laughs> the offensive bus made it. The defensive bus hadn't made it to the game yet. Clyde Newell, he's improved as a passer throughout the year, and you can see it right on time to Chris Brown, 75 yards. Miles makes the extra point. That's the only thing that's separating the two teams right now. Tuskegee with the one-point lead. That's a good look at Brown. Enjoying his touchdown. Unfortunately, his team is down after that play. But what uh, what a what a start for both teams' offenses. And I'm sure the two head coaches aren't too happy about that uh, on either side. But it's uh, almost even now once again. So we'll see what happens. Let's see if the the defenses have woken up now after two big plays. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure those defensive coordinators had a few choice words. To say to their defensives, you know, going into that little break there. Both plays going right down the middle of the field. It's Pritchett back deep to receive it from Spradlin. 
So the play for Williams was 73 yards. The play started at the 27-yard line, not the 22-yard line. Apologies on that. It's Bradland's kick. And down towards the side. And uh, it is fielded by Kobe Mitchell. And Mitchell will take it across the 25 to the 27-yard line. And so once again, Tuskegee will start right there. 14-26 to play in the first quarter. And we've got, sound like we had a flag on the play. And you see it. And now usually in, in this type of territory, in those kickoffs, you know, you usually have a block in the back or a hole, somebody trying to be a, a bit aggressive, you know, especially when they come all the way across the field on a return like that. You know, it's always, always something little. That's why coaches have gray hairs or ball. Oh, personal foul. See the left side of the screen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Little hands <laughs> to the face right there. They did it twice yeah. right there. Yeah. But two overzealous there was, uh, look at that, it's Rorick Stewart yeah, on that one. He, he was just giving, some give, giving him a pat upside the head, you know, <laughs> telling him good job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just telling him good job. Good game. <laughs> so, so how do both teams reset themselves after you'll see two big plays like that? How do you reset yourself in, in this situation? You know, as a coach, you just tell your team, okay, this is the start of the game. You know, don't worry about that last play. You know, we're basically tied. This is the first play of the game. You know, just calm your guys down and let them know this is the start of the game. All right. Terry Bryant in the backfield with Williams on his first down. Williams drops the snap this time. He's still fumbling around. Tackled out of the 11-yard line. Yeah, a huge loss on the play on first down. And see, here's the dangerous thing about running those read options, those option plays like that out of the shotgun. He was looking he was looking at his back to go ahead and fake that fake instead of catching the ball first. When you come, when you're running out of the shotgun as a quarterback, your first job is to actually catch the ball. Right. It sounds simple, but a lot of times it doesn't happen. And now you have a second and 13 because he didn't catch the ball. Lost a three on the play. It'll be second down. Pair of wide outs. Uh, coming left side is Bryant. Terry Bryant, the fullback. Takes across the 15 to the 16-yard line. A pick up a five on the play and a bring up third and long for the Golden Tigers. And see, that's a good job of playing sideline to sideline. Kadarius Roberts, you know, that defensive end just sliding over, crowding up that, crowding up that inside and shutting off that hole. Good job of just stopping that for a minimum game. Third down and eight. Got to get the ball to the 24-yard line for a first down. Another little bring in. Big number 34, Jarvis McKee in the backfield. Ball with Bryant, Williams. Southpaw looking to throw. He's under pressure. He's taken down. Darius Roberts, we just mentioned him, and he makes another play for the Golden Titans. It'll be a punt on fourth down. And, you know, that's nothing fancy, nothing special. That's just a straight bull rush. What Roberts did, look at him. As he gets down there, he gets lower than the man in front of him, and he drives the guard back into the quarterback. All that is is a defensive tackle lining up over offensive guard and saying, I'm bigger than you, I'm better than you, and I'm better than you. And he just takes him into the quarterback. Oh, I, you know, I'm an ex-linebacker. I love that. <laughs> I love good defensive play like that, man. That, ooh, that gives me happy up here in the booth. 6'3", 285, sophomore from Winfield, Louisiana. Fourth down. Puck coming from Ryan Duff from his own end zone. And back deep for... Miles is Anthony Robinson. Robinson trying to reverse his field as he caught it at the 38 and will just step out of bounds near the 45 yard line. And uh, that's where Miles will have it next. 12.05 remaining in this first quarter. So Miles gets a stop and Clyde Newell will bring the offense back out. And now, if you're the defensive coordinator for Tuskegee, you're saying. Oh, flag. I think that it's a flag down. I think there might have been a hole on the kicking team. You know, we'll see it. We'll see it on the replay. But I think he might have grabbed the hold. He might have grabbed the hold of him as he was coming in there to block the kick. Depends there on is it. no foul. Oh. The block occurred in the front. First down. Mm. So it'll be first down for the Golden Bears. Three minutes in. Reginald Ruffin will try to have his offense. 
take the lead here in this first first quarter. We'll just throw a 75-yard touchdown pass to Chris Brown. It was in the backfield. Trips to the near side on this first down. A team that averages over 351 yards a game. Offensively, Tuskegee gives up 327 yards. Last week certainly uncharacteristic for them. As Newell looks to throw again, right side, pass is incomplete. Hit him in the worst. Tried to hit Montavious Tent. Sorry about that. Hit him in the worst place possible. <laughs> hit him in his hands. <laughs> you know, when you you make it to the to the next level, you know, you're you're a collegiate player. You gotta catch those balls. You know, those those are the type of passes where the quarterback has that conversation with that wide receiver. You know, after the film session on Monday, they'll sit down, <laughs> and it won't be a pleasant conversation. We got another. I have another flag on the play. It's been a busy officiating crew early on in this in this game. This Slater coach wants to know what the penalty is. Illegal mode. Offensive player put in motion from the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. Yeah, I guess that receiver, you know, he lined up on the line and he actually went in motion and went to the backfield. So, yeah. Well, I'll move Miles back to the 40-yard line. So, it'll be first and 15. You know, those are penalties that you don't expect that, you know, the last game of the season. You know, that's an early season mistake. Yeah, this offense... Number two rushing offense in the SIAC, but they've uh, shown the ability to pass the ball. Here's Dante Edwards, his first carry of the game, and he has stopped early as he gets to the 41-yard line. Yeah, you like to see that right there. That's Christian Johnson coming up. You know, in our book, they got him listed. They got him listed as a tight end, but I love the way he came up and controlled the hole. If you're the middle linebacker, you're playing in the middle right there, you got to come up and just stuff that hole, and that's exactly what he did. So they'll give him a two on the play to the 42. Second down and 13. Edwards in the backfield. And Marcus Lodge to the near side. Chris Brown up top. Play clock down to five. Edwards gets the carry again and goes straight up the middle. Another big play up the middle. Goes all the way into Tuskegee territory to the 42-yard line. And that'll be... Looks like there'll be enough for a first down on a 16-yard pickup. See, here's the thing about Edwards. It's the vision. That's something I love about running backs, running backs who have that vision. That play was supposed to go to the right, but he saw it was blocked up, and he made that hard cut back to the left. And, you know, he picked up, picked up 10 yards on the play. That's that vision, that field vision that you love to see out of your running backs. 113 yards and a touchdown on 24 carries last week. 16-9 win over Edward Waters for... Miles last week. So first down at 42 in Tuskegee territory. Edwards' third consecutive carry coming left side. And breaking tackles inside the 30. Pushed out of bounds finally by Marquez Delafield. And Edwards off to a solid start. See, one thing about Edwards, we're going to go down a checklist all game long. We're going to go down a checklist of things that you want out of a running back. The next thing you want out of a running back is patience. You saw how he followed his lead blocker out there, had his hand on his hip. He didn't go past that lead blocker. He let his lead blocker set up the block so he could follow and pick up those extra yards. Patience. What do we say? Field vision, patience. That's the next thing you want out of a running back. Edwards is going to take you down that list. Six foot two, twenty-five, junior, and off the play fake. No, looking to throw, gets his man, and on the flat, that's DeAndre Harvey, and Harvey takes it inside the ten-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Golden Bears. DeAndre Harvey, you know, I, I talked to uh, Coach uh, Mr. Moore, the SI, the SID, and he was telling me about the talented tight ends they had, Montavious Tench and Deontay Harvey. These are two guys they, when they go double tight, they like to go double tight. They're the two big guys at tight end. A 20-yard pass play to Harvey. So it's first and goal at the eight-yard line. Miles looking for his first lead of the ball game. Fly to the near side. Brown up top, one-on-one. -on -one. Edwards in the backfield. 
And they look that way for Brown and incomplete. Delafield was all over Brown, and that's going to be some three yards. And Brown is holding his left arm, or favoring his left arm. That's going to be interference against Tuskegee. Yeah. One thing about playing cornerback, you, you know, you're out there by yourself. You have to man up and be out there by yourself. But if you put that arm out there, if you put that arm out there, you're holding that. That's receiver. interference. Defense, number eight. This foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball is placed at the two-yard line. Automatic, first down. The official's going to call that every time. You see how he has that arm fully extended? The right. official's going to call that every time. You can't make it easy for the refs. So Belfield been a busy man already, but uh, comes up with a penalty on that play. As they tend to Chris Brown on the sideline. Jai Andrews is out there now, their leading receiver for Miles. So now it's first and goal once again, this time from the two-yard line. It's going to be Dante Edwards' time right here. And Edwards coming left side. He's got the end zone. Touchdown, Miles. Oh, yeah, just follow behind that massive offensive line, and you're going to sneak on into the end zone no problem whatsoever. Seventh time that Dante Edwards has found the end zone, and Miles takes the lead at 12-7. We'll see if they try to make it 14-7. Oh, let's go with the extra point. About as easy as you can get right there. <laughs> That's a huge hole there for Dante. Doesn't need a lot, to, a lot of room. <laughs> Uh, Spradlin kicks the extra point, and it is good. So Miles takes a 13-7 lead on Tuskegee. We've got 9.08 to play in the first half. And Dante Edwards fighting the end zone for the seventh time this season for the Golden Bears. Since 1898, the concept of higher learning for African Americans has thrived and flourished here in the metropolitan Birmingham, Alabama. Miles College is a senior private liberal arts historically black college with roots in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church that motivates and prepares students to seek knowledge which leads to intellectual and civic empowerment. The Miles College education engages students in rigorous study, scholarly inquiry, and spiritual awareness, enabling graduates to become lifelong learners and responsible citizens who help shape our global society. Through its coursework, community development projects, and philanthropic partnerships, Miles College students graduate with the knowledge and wisdom needed to reach their full potential and thrive in a shifting 21st century landscape. Learn more today about Miles College. To donate, learn more about course information, or to schedule a visit, go to miles.edu. Since 1837, historically black colleges and universities have been fulfilling their purpose to educate and empower. Since 2009, the Home Depot's Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant Program has also been powered by a purpose to update, upgrade, and uplift HBCU campuses. Today, 44 million votes, $4.1 million, and 147 grants later, we remain inspired by the people, the passion, and the power of HBCUs to continue our purpose. Learn more at retoolyourschools.com. Miles on top, 13-7 on Tuskegee. Oh, for a big day in the SIAC West with three teams fighting for the spot. Right now, Kentucky State is all over Central State, 28 to nothing at the half there in Frankfort, Kentucky. So Kentucky State, big fans right now of Tuskegee. But right now, the Miles College Golden Bears have the lead. And, of course, uh, Benedict taking on Lane today. Benedict up 14-7 to late in the first quarter. So... Uh, Lane needs both Kentucky State and Miles to lose in order to get to the SIAC championship game. So a lot of scoreboard watching here this afternoon. Exactly. Tough road for Lane. I don't think that's going to happen the way Kentucky State's playing and the way Central State has been playing all year. You know, those are one of those ones you, uh, you, you kind of pencil in Kentucky State to win that one, and they're living up to it. So Miles has two possessions, two touchdowns, 75-yard touchdown. 
pass to Chris Brown from Claude Newell, and then Dante Edwards just finished off a 55-yard drive with a two-yard run. So Tuskegee getting it back from its own 25, and uh, a tough possession for Tuskegee last time. This is an offense that has struggled most of the year. They're averaging just 20 points a game and just under 300 yards of total offense, both ninth best in the league. And uh, so Sylvester, obviously, you get a big play to start the game, but uh, sometimes Tuskegee has found these lulls that they don't play well offensively. And that's the thing. You have to figure out how to build off of what you do well. And, and Tuskegee's kind of trying to – still trying to find out what they do well, what they excel in. And that big play might have been a little bit of fool's goal to start the game off. First down, Williams off the play fake. Going to try to run. No, throws at the last second. It's incomplete. Like he wanted to hit Latravian O'Neal, the tight end. The second down. Yeah, he tried to hit the tight end, but that's the one thing. When he rolls out to that side and he sees that pressure's coming, he has to drop down to his secondary receiver. He dropped down to that tight end, his number two look, a little bit too late. On a play like that, if that first guy isn't open, then you make your progression down. And he didn't make his progression down to a little bit too late. And then that caused that bad pass. Second down from the 25, three wide outs for the Golden Tigers. Empty backfield. Sends Pritchard in motion, and Pritchard will get it on the jet sweep. Coming around the outside, and uh, it's across the 30. His helmet comes off, so that ends the play right there. They will mark it. One official has it at the 32. The other has it at the 33. We'll see if they put it down. It'll be third down for Tuskegee. You know, I, I'm a fan of that rule. You know, they, they implemented it probably about three or four years ago. They made it nationwide. If your helmet comes off, the play stops dead automatically. Because what happens, you have a lot of kids that keep trying to go with that head, with that helmet off. And then <laughs> it, it usually doesn't turn out well running down the field without a helmet. Well, you, you have to have one of those. You're going to play football. <laughs> Third down and three. They got to get to the 35, and Williams will throw for it. Over the middle, pass incomplete. Tried to hit Stephen Hodges. Yeah, that's 26 catches on the season. The senior from Montgomery, but that one is off the mark. It'll be fourth down, and it looks like another punt is upcoming for the Golden Tigers. Yeah, that's one he wanted to force in there. I, it, I think that's one he wanted to have. If he could have that one back, he would definitely love to have that one back. Tried to force that quick slant on the third on the third and, uh, what, third and three. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you got to go to that second option. The first option isn't always going to be there. Ryan Duff, Ryan Duff back to punt. And Trujillo back deep for the Golden Bears. He's telling everybody to get away from it. And that was not a smart decision, an unfortunate decision for him as he gets it inside a five. Nice punt by Ryan Duff. That one started from the 32-yard line, goes all the way down to the three. 65-yard punt. Claude Newell on the offense back on the field for Miles. When we come back to Fairfield, up by six.
Back here in Fairfield, Alabama, of course, a big day in the SIAC. It was Kentucky State leading 28 to nothing on Central State. Benedict on top of the lane, 14 to seven. That's the West title on the line. Also today, Morehouse at Clark Atlanta in the backyard brawl. Fort Valley State and Albany State in the Fountain City Classic. Edward Waters taking on Savannah State later on this afternoon. First down for Clyde Newell from his own three-yard line out of his end zone. The pass is complete to the sideline. That catch made by Marcus Lodge, his first catch of the game. The sophomore from Plantation, Florida. It'll be a first down. Four miles. Good job. Of, good job of, of tiptoeing that line. Did they give him the completion? Uh, I'm sorry. That is an incomplete pass they called. Looked like he was able to get that foot down in bounds, but unfortunately he did not. So it'll be second down and 10. It's a completion in the Canadian League. Well, like it might have had, him might have came down out of bounds before that right foot got in. So second and 10 for Claude Newell and the Miles' offense scored in his first two possessions. A long way to go to do that on this one. As Edwards takes it left side, and he has stopped immediately. Wesley Apollon was one of the men there, along with Christian Johnson. You know, I'm loving the middle linebacker play by Johnson, the way he's controlling that hole, controlling that A gap, that B gap. You know, once you see, as a middle linebacker, once you see that hole open up, it's your job to fill that hole, fill that gap, and he's he's filling the gap, he's filling the hole. Good job by that young man over there, Christian Johnson. Johnson off to a great start. Third and eight for the Golden Bears. Newell looking right side pass is complete, and trying to get to the first down after the 13 yard line. That pass will be looks like it's going to be good enough for the first down by Cohen Hudson. Bears. And that's just a good job of getting off your goal line. And you see the protection up front from the offensive line. You know, they're giving them plenty of time to sit up there and throw that pass. Yeah, you know, one thing I like about this Miles offensive line, they have two true soft, I mean, two true freshmen, Eric Blair and Christian Tyman. You know, these are guys 18 years old in the lineup, starting that guard, been doing it the whole season. You know, that's huge for, for an 18-year-old to come on campus and start. It's a good offensive line, which has helped Miles lead the SIAC in rushing. First charge like, timeout. Like when Miles, timeout taken, 30 seconds in duration. Timeout taken by Miles, 13-7 to 7 is the score. So, uh, Sylvester, as you... We talk about this first quarter already a lot of fireworks, but uh, right now it seems like the team, like, seems like especially on the defensive side, both teams have kind of settled in. And, you know, and, and I think that was just the shock of, you know, big time game here. It's, it's two ways you can look at this. You know, if, if you're Miles, you understand the importance of this, of you winning another SIAC championship, and it's a huge game to you. And so maybe you might look ahead just a tiny bit. And then if you're Tuskegee, you're like, oh, man, it's the end of the year. I need to hurry up and, and get this thing over with. Right. And so you, you might not be quite as focused. And then that first play, someone comes and just hits you straight in the mouth. That, that wakes you up. Right. <laughs> and they got that wake-up call and say, hey, man, we still got plenty of football to play. These two teams combined for seven of the land done since Tuskegee ended a four-year uh, four streak of winning championships from 2006 to 2009. Uh, actually, the 2006 year, Albany State and Tuskegee tied for the SIAC title, and Albany State ended a streak of four straight years of winning. So it's hard to win in the SIAC. Miles trying to make it three in a row. As Edwards zigzags his way through, gets across the 25 up to the 27. See right now, Edwards is showing that package. Now, what did we say earlier? We said feel, we said uh, uh, feel, vision, patience, and now he's showing a little bit of dexterity. See where he moves around in the hole. The 22, here's Edwards again, across the 30, all the way out to the 33 yard line. And Miles is going to keep on trying to matriculate this ball down the field with Edwards. He is on a roll right now, 10 more yards for Dante. And this is what I like about uh, about Miles. You know that if they see something they like, they keep on doing it. You know if it's working, 
Don't try to fix it. Just keep on giving it the Edwards up the middle. Let your backs run, and that sets up that play action. Watch as these, these free safeties start to sneak on up a little bit. And we're staying in the backfield. Get another carry. And breaks through the hole once again, bouncing off tacklers all the way across the 45. Marcus Lodge was there again with another block, another 14 yards for, for Edwards, and he's really picked up a, a rhythm here in this first quarter. I'm telling you, man, just straight ahead running. And this is the thing. They're not doing anything fancy. They're not doing anything special. They're just coming straight at you. That offensive line is telling the defensive line from Tuskegee, we're bigger than you and we're better than you. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Playing that, right, playing that way right now. Ryan Hicks in the backfield. That one outside to Lodge. And Lodge and Delafield battling as uh, Edwards on the sideline. And uh, that one a short gain on that uh, first down play for Miles. It'll be second down. And see, that's a nice play. That's, that, that's what that play action does. When you're running straight up the middle like that, it freezes the cornerbacks. It freezes the linebackers. So it gets your receiver just an extra second, maybe an extra two seconds to make a move and get open. First catch of the day for Lodge, the team's leading receiver, 265 receiving yards coming into today. On second down is Brian Hicks getting the carry. Left side, the 46-yard line. Gain of a yard for Hicks, the freshman from Quitman, Mississippi. See the young freshman get in there and relieve the running back, pick up, pick up a few yards while he's in there. Got his uniform a little dirty, you know. He waved to the people at home, let them know he played. That's right. All <laughs> hands are on deck here today. As Edwards back in the lineup now. Oh, well, no one went the wrong way on that one. See what he can do with it on this third down. He actually gets the first down. He gets to the 42-yard line. He was finally dragged down by Tony Johnson. We look at uh, the first quarter for Dante Edwards. What did I say, man? It's a list of things you're gonna, we're going to call out today what makes a complete running back. Field vision, patience, dexterity, dexterity. Those are the first three. Now, there's a couple of more, and I'm pretty sure Edwards, we're going to cross off that whole list before the end of the night, before the end of the afternoon. Out to Edwards. That's 68 yards right now on eight carries. And we got whistles before Edwards gets to get another carry. It's going to be a false start against Miles. Yeah, I think Edwards was a little bit too anxious on that play. Practice. Fuck Number 70. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. That is Jalen King. Yep, 77, Jalen King. 423 left in the first quarter. Miles with a six-point lead. Trying to add to it, but they had set back five. It's first and 15. Hicks gets the carry. Oh, it meets, <laughs> meets a wall there at the 45-yard line. Apple on there on the stop along with Sean Cross. Sean Cross with a big hit. Big hit filling that hole. <laughs> Once again, I love linebacker play. You know, I, I love it. I love it. I love a guy who can come in there and fill a hole. You know, anytime you get a running back, you get some little running back coming your way. Oh, no, <laughs> come on. Come on, you can't come through here, little man. Access denied. Second and 13, Jeremy D's also on that stop. Four wideouts for Miles. Here comes Newell, throws right side, passes caught. Edwards out of the backfield. Oh, nice open field tackle. My goodness. Nicely done by Carl Matthews the third. He's the team's leading tackler. Yeah, great job by Matthews to get out there. When you're outside on by yourself with a crafty running back like that, you have to break down. Look at him. Sees the running back, breaks down. Look at him, break down. Now wrap up and take his man back. That's what you want out of coverage right there. That's your outside linebacker covering the pass out of the backfield. Love it. One of those drills you work on in practice. Just, just uh, make sure you break down and get a hold of him. So now it's third and four. They got to get to the 34-yard line and no looking to throw. Fires. It's Oops. intercepted. 
picked off by Johnson, who's had, who called his name a lot early on, and he takes it out to the 45-yard line. So the first mistake of the game for Newell. Newell with the second interception of the season, and Tuskegee will get it back in prime field position. Mama, there goes that man again. We've been calling Johnson all game long. He's been filling the hole that line. Prior back. to the change of possession, personal foul, legal hands to the face, offense number 77. That penalty's declined. Result of the play is an interception. First down, Tuskegee. Yeah. We've been calling. He's been filling the hole on defense. He's been going sideline to sideline. He's playing that wheel backer spot. And this time he drops in the coverage. It's a perfect drop straight in the coverage. Look out him. Pedal back, pedal back, and come up underneath the receiver. Textbook. Looked like he was looking for another one of those big tight ends, Rashad Nelson. But unfortunately, Christian Johnson pick, gets, picks it off. And we got a new quarterback for Tuskegee. Malik Davis is in. And he'll hand it off to Bryant. And Bryant will take it out to midfield. Pick up of about four on first down. It'll be second down for the Golden Tigers. You know, seeing Malik, we didn't expect to see Malik uh, so early this game. But coach wants to go make a change. Wants to try to find, get something new. It could also be another situation where you're trying to see what you have going into next year, what kind of play, uh, what kind of plays the, these guys can make. So on second down, Davis on the roll, and Malik is going to be tackled at the 48-yard line. Uh, didn't really try to do much with the ball. Marquell Shelton, he is a tackle for loss machine. That's another one for him this season. And now here's the thing. As a quarterback, you have to realize there's nothing there and the person's converging on you. Just toss it out of bounds. You're not, you're not going to beat that running back. It's not enough room. I mean, it's not enough room for you to beat that linebacker to the corner. Just go ahead and just toss that thing over to the sideline and take, and take the uh, loss of down. Just like that, you take the loss of down with no loss on the play, but now you get a loss of a down and a loss on the play. It'll be third and seven. I have to get to the 45 of Miles for first down. Five wide outs for Davis, and he looks to throw. Still looking. Now going to run 40. He's going to get the first down just barely. It's a big hit again. It gets to the 44-yard line, so Davis makes the play, and he picks up a first down for the Golden Tigers. You know, that's keeping his eye downfield. Look at that. He's keeping his eye always downfield, looking, and then he'll pull it down and just go ahead and know where the first down marker is. Now, you would love for somebody to teach him how to slide before it's all over with. But I'm sure he would like to also <laughs> learn how to slide. Final minute of the first quarter. And Tuskegee stay with the five wide outs in the empty backfield. Davis will take it on the quarterback draw and uh, take it down near the 42. The tackle made by Jamarius Brown. Final 30 seconds of the quarter. a good thing getting this young sophomore in here letting him get some experience put him right into the fire in this very important game for Miles Tuskegee with that opening run by Bryson Williams not much since then they're trying to start a drive over the middle pass is caught nicely done down to the 25 yard line that's Jam Jamal Couch the wide receiver he makes his first catch of the game, and it's first down for Tuskegee in a game of 18. And see, this is a dangerous thing if you're Miles. You're letting a young sophomore who doesn't play that often build up his confidence. He hasn't done too many things bad. You know, he just ran out of bounds one time. First completion of the game for Davis. It's 13-7. to This teams will switch sides as they go to the second quarter. Back at Fairfield in just a moment on ESPN.
Files on top of Tuskegee, 13 to 7. So we start the second quarter. Kamari Darrington along with Sylvester Williams. Sylvester Tuskegee on the drive here at the 25 yard line. And this carry goes to Bryant. And Bryant is tripped up before he can get started. Down towards the 22 yard line. Pick up a three on the play. That'll be second down. You know, that's just a good, that's a decent play to start off the quarter. You know, just keep that defense honest, run straight up the middle, make sure everybody's still paying attention down there in between the tackles. Roswell well, Thompson on the stop. Miles had 192 yards of offense in that first quarter, 98 for Tuskegee, but a six point game here in Fairfield. Tuskegee trying to possibly take the lead if they can get a touchdown and the extra point. Off the play fake, Davis looking, going for the end zone. He's got a man, it is caught. Touchdown, Tuskegee. Latravian O'Neal, the tight end, his fourth touchdown of the season. And Malik Davis has a touchdown pass. And Tuskegee, an extra point away from taking the lead. And look at that. They ran a little two-man combo route. The wide receiver ran the post route. And then the tight end kind of ran that wheel route to the outside. It was a mismatch. Had that tight end on the free safety. He's a bigger guy, so he got behind him in a well-thrown ball, just a well-thrown ball to the back of the end zone, and that's a touchdown. That's a beautifully designed play. It's a beautifully ran play, and you end up with a beautiful touchdown. 23 yards on the play, and there's some uh, a little nervous energy here in Fairfield, Alabama. as. Uh, Tuskegee comes back with the extra point from Arns Huskey. That is good. And Miles has a one-point lead. Uh, Tuskegee has a one-point lead on, to, on Miles. Davis to O'Neal, 23 yards. Tuskegee back in front by a point. As a global bank, our game plan is to help clients manage their money. We're a team of challengers, thinkers, and go-getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, SIAC, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. website or in the new hometown fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the hometown fan app today. you love to play academy sports and outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your academy store Lee davis hadn't thrown a pass all season he's two for two today with the 23 yard touchdown pass of the trevin o'neill and Tuskegee back in front, 14 to 13. And Sylvester, like you said earlier, Tuskegee's not going to make it easy on Miles to get to the SIC championship game. You know, it's this little thing called pride that gets in the way of some very well-laid plans. It's a little thing called pride. And Tuskegee sure they still have a lot of pride, and they're not going to roll over for Miles. We'll see if Miles can come back here. Again, the missed extra point by Miles. The difference so far this is a return by... Trujillo out near the 25-yard line. That's where Miles will start once again. 
So, Miles scored on his first two possessions, but then Claude Newell threw an interception for just the second time this season. So, he'll have to come back out and hopefully have a short memory for if you're a Miles College fan. You know, I think we're going to see a lot of Edwards. We're going to see a lot of Dante Edwards on this drive, man. He had an impressive. That drive was working really well for him. He was knocking off big chunks of yardage, and then they got a little fancy and put it in the air. And Edwards in the backfield. Oh, trying to atone for that interception. Shift the line. A bunch formation to the far side. And they'll pitch it to Edwards on the right side, trying to get some blockers out there. And he's still going on his He is a tough customer to bring down after the 28 yard line. Apollon and Johnson who had the interception over there on the stop. You know, we keep talking about these keys to being a good running back. You know, field vision, patience, dexterity. The next one on the list is power. If you want to be a good running back, you need to have power. You can't let that first man bring you down. It's going to take a couple of people to bring you down. So power, that's the next thing. That's the next key you need to be a great running back. Four wide outs for Miles on the second down. Edwards again in the backfield. A little five for seven so far. And a quick throw to the outside. And that pass complete. To Ed Andrews. Andrews makes his first catch of the game. Jared Andrews picks up three more. Freshman from, uh, from Birmingham. You know, good job of McMillan of getting there and just taking him down by the shoestring. When you throw these little quick hitters, those little quick screens out to the wide receiver, you're hoping that one man misses. If one man misses, that's a big play. On third down, they're going to hand it off to Edwards. Edwards cuts up field, and he should have a first down. Apollon on the tackle again, but again, Dante Edwards moving the chains for Miles College. That's the thing, man. And you know, granddaddy told me, if you got a huss, ride him. <laughs> well, they have ridden him the second best rushing offense in the SIAC, and then you've got Kingston Davis, who comes off the bench, and we haven't even seen him yet. And he's one of the top five rushers in the SIAC in his own right. Exactly. So this is a lethal running game. And Claude Null, he's improved throughout the season. That first game against Alabama State, they didn't even throw the ball <laughs> very much. <laughs> and Null's got a little bit better as Edwards now tries the right side. And Wesley Apollon is getting very acquainted with Dante Edwards this afternoon. He makes another tackle. Another short game for Edwards. It'll be second down. You know, this is, this is one of the things as a linebacker you love to have, man, because you know they're going to run the ball. You know they're running straight at you. So this is one of the games you love to have as a linebacker, man. You're just going to put some pads on people all night long. Nothing fancy about what Miles is doing right now. Second down and seven. Four wideouts for the Golden Bears. Skiggy just took the lead on the last possession. Touchdown pass for O'Neal. I was trying to beat Tuskegee for the third straight time. Trying to host the SIC championship game next week. Edwards, again, just kind of squirts through that hole. Just not, not being taken down by the first man. He takes it out to the 42. Another short game will be third down. You know, something else I noticed about Edwards, when he runs, he rarely falls backwards. I hadn't seen him fall backwards yet. Every time he's tackled, he's tackled going forward. Got a player down. We'll take a break with them. Miles trailing by one, but they've got. Uh, well, I'm moving. We've got an injured player.
Well, he's trailing by a point. Here's your player Eric Blair came on off on the sideline and getting tended to by the trainer. Five Noel back on the offensive set. Four wideouts, four miles. Third down, got to get it to the 45 for first down. Edwards in the backfield, and he'll get the carry, and he is met in the backfield, and that'll be fourth down. Great job by the Tuskegee defense. As once again, that time it's Tony Johnson making the play, and it'll be fourth down. Edwards on a loss. Big play by Tony stepping up. You know, when you know that run is coming and you can step up in there and get that run, man, that, that's so much for your confidence. It does so much for you as a team for you to step in there and make that big play on third down, man. Huge play. Huge tackle by Tony. Jamal Pritchett back deep to receive the punt. Jay Fitch is the punter for Miles. 35 punts coming into the season, a 36-yard average. Pritchett scaling over towards it, and that ball will be downed. At the one-yard line, a signal of a touchback, so it looks like Tuskegee will be backed up, and Jay Fitch happy about that one. So that punt, those 58 yards. So Miles, uh, Tuskegee will start on the shadow of its own end zone. You know, as a punt returner, it's a dangerous life that you have to live. But sometimes you got to put your body on the line. When you see that ball is taking that roll like that, you see it's taking that bad roll, you got to put your body on the line. You, you either have to go in there, run in, and try to block that guy who's as close to the ball as possible, or you just got to go out there and dive and try to catch that ball on that hop to stop it, and you don't end up on the one-yard line like they did, man. You got A punt returner is a dangerous job. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very, very risky for your health. So Malik Davis, a sophomore from Apopka, Florida. Starting this drive, Brian, ooh, gotta be careful out here. Safety gives Miles the lead. Brian able to get out near the three yard line. It'll be second and nine. They'll give him the uh, two yard line on that one. You know, just a little bit of breathing room. That's all they got on that play. Just a little bit of breathing room. So maybe they can open up that playbook just a little bit more. But it's still dangerous territory down here for the, for the Golden Tigers. Second and nine. Got to get it out to the 11. And they got another run. And that carry by Kavian Kay Goodlow. Another short gain on the play. It'll be third down. You know, giving it to the senior out of Georgia. You know, give it to your big guy. You know, hopefully your big guy can carry the pile just a little bit forward for you. Now it's third and nine. This is so tricky when you're the offensive coordinator. Do you risk it and throw that pass? Or third, I'm sorry, third and six. Do you risk it and throw that pass? Or do you sit up here and you just try to run straight ahead so you can get a little bit more better punting situation? And the answer is they're going to try to run for it. And nothing doing there for Goodlow. Again, this Miles defense. Very solid defense for the Golden, Golden Bears. They're the number three total defense in the SIAC coming into the game. You know, and that play right there, just one of those unfortunate things of having being backed up into your own territory so far back. But here's the thing about having, having a punter. A punter is a weapon. It is a weapon. A lot of people overlook special teams. But if you have that weapon on your punt on your punting team, a lot can happen. Now, you see this uh, you see the punter from Tuskegee is lined up all the way in the back of the end zone. Anthony Robinson back deep. They almost blocked it. Robinson was standing on this side of the 50. He picks it up on the run. That was a dangerous play. And uh, I wonder if they say he made a fair catch signal. It looks like they said that he did, so. Might as well have it at the 40-yard line. Good field position for Miles after this play. Miles trailing by a point.
for all the ways you love to play. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. As a global bank, our game plan is to help clients manage their money. We're a team of challengers, thinkers, and go-getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, SIAC, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. Since 1837, historically black colleges and universities have been fulfilling their purpose to educate and empower. Since 2009, the Home Depot's Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant Program has also been powered by a purpose to update, upgrade, and uplift HBCU campuses. Today, 44 million votes, $4.1 million, and 147 grants later, we remain inspired by the people, the passion, and the power of HBCUs to continue our purpose. Learn more at retoolyourschools.com. Miles back, back on the offensive attack in great field position in the Tuskegee 40. Looking to take the lead, trailing by a point, 14 to 13 at the midway point of the second quarter. And they will start this one with a play fake and Newell to the left side, incomplete. Looked like Lodge stopped his route. Looked like the play was open, but it's going to be second down. You know, just a little bit of miscommunication out there by the wide receiver. <laughs> wide receiver is expecting the pass to come short and pass comes long. You know, and, and when you see stuff like that, when you're in the booth, when we're in the booth, we wonder who messed up. Was it, was it the quarterback or was it the receiver? I guess it depends on your perspective. It's, you know, the receiver has got to get the ball, got to catch the ball if it's coming to him, but the quarterback's got to get him the ball. So uh, it just depends on, uh, if you have a former quarterback, he's always going to blame the receiver. So <laughs> neither one of us is a former quarterback. So uh, <laughs> we'll uh, give that one to the quarterback. Second down. Newell rolls to his left, now looking, and he's going to be sacked. Big number nine, Devere Hamilton. Redshirt junior from Compton played at Utah and picks up his third sack of the season. And see, look at that. Here's, here's Edwards outside trying to block, and he didn't maintain his block. You know, he thought his quarterback was going to keep on going to the outside, but his quarterback stepped to the inside, and then, boom, he stepped right into a sack. It's a third and long now, third and 15. I got to get the ball all the way to the Tuskegee 30. So this is a great field position for Miles. You certainly don't want to squander it. One play away from doing so. Under the seven-minute mark of the second quarter. No setting up a screen for Edwards, and there's nowhere to go. I mean, there are four red jerseys, and they fumbled the ball out of bounds. But, again, this Tuskegee all over that screen pass, and it's going to be fourth down. See, what blew up that screen was a well-timed blitz. You know, anytime you have a screen, you know, you want to set those defensive linemen and have them coming up. But when you have a well-timed blitz, when no one can touch that outside backer, it forces the quarterback to kind of throw the ball behind where he intended to throw it, and that just gives all the defensive linemen and all the defensive backs enough time just to get up there and blow that screen out of the water. So then... Had at the 46-yard line, so no gain on the play. And again, Pritchett back inside his own 10. It's fourth down. And Pritchett this time will let it. Oh, it hit the pylon. Is it out at the one again? No, they're going to yeah. call it a touchback. I think it did get, get to the end zone. So Yeah, when it hits that pylon, it's dead. That consider, it's considered in the end zone. And so a break there for Tuskegee. And here's the difference between the punt returners. Really on the field is a touchback. The difference between the punt returners, you saw what happened when Miles, when the ball 
hit off of that first bounce. The Miles punt returner, he caught it off the first bounce and, you know, he, he waved it a fair catch, but he stopped it from advancing. Now, this has been the second time that Tuskegee, their punt returner, has allowed the ball to bounce and roll, and it could have been a dead ball Kill right him. there. You know, one Kill more him. yard, that would have been out on the one-yard line. So Second straight punt. Yes, yeah, second straight punt. So Tuskegee's punt returners, they have to understand you can feel that ball on the bounce. It's not illegal to feel it on the bounce. So another 26 yards on the punt there. So first down, and that snap goes through the wickets. Davis picks it up. Oh, could handle it. Aaron Miles is going to have a touchdown. Kadarius Roberts, we've called his name already. And Roberts gets it into the end zone on the fumble recovery. And Miles regains the lead on the mistake by the Tuskegee offense. He'll remember that one for a lifetime. A senior on senior night gets a touchdown. And here's the thing. As a quarterback, you, you got to understand, I know you want to do a lot for your team. I know you're trying to do a lot and something extra for your team. But in a situation like that, you just have to fall on it. And you got to sacrifice the two points rather than give up six. You know, you just, eh, that's a dangerous one. You got to fall on it and, and just give up the safety. Looks like running down, and Miles is going to have to call a timeout. So you make a big play, and it, that usually happens. Second charge timeout of the half. 19 to 14. Miles, Miles just gets a fumble with t touchdown. And recovering in the end zone by Darius Roberts. The extra point is pending. Miles College with a lot to swag about as they take the lead on the bad snap. We've had a little bit of everything. Big plays on offense, a couple of missed cues leading to touchdowns. The interception by Claude Newell from Miles leading to a Tuskegee touchdown pass. And now Miles will try to make it a 21-14 game with this two-point conversion attempt after Kadarius Roberts recovered the bad snap fumble into the end zone. Edwards coming left side. Can he get there? He's got the two points. Dante Edwards gets it into the end zone, and it's now a seven-point lead for Miles with 5.59 remaining in the second quarter. So Miles takes advantage of the miscue by Tuskegee. So each team has given up a touchdown on the miscue. You know, penalties, mistakes, mental errors, going too hard and, and, and not going too hard at the appropriate amount of times. Those are the keys to the game. 
those were those are the little things that cause you to lose a season and lose a championship, and that's kind of what's plagued Tuskegee this year. Tuskegee, Tuskegee's not a bad team. It's just certain mistakes at key points in time have put them in the situation they're in now. So Davis is trying to make a play. Will is going to try to pick it up, probably throw it away to avoid the big loss, and then Edwards' two-point conversion, and it's just man-on-man, man. and Edwards usually is going to win the battle. There's another look at it. This is a – I saw him run against Alabama State. It just like you were saying, he just never falls backward. He always falls forward. Those flowing locks he's got through that helmet. <laughs> uh, he gets those things churning, and uh, he keeps the legs going. He is a tough guy to bring down. So Miles is back in front, 21-14. to 14. They get the two-point conversion. And there's a lot of things going on right now in the SIAC. I'll tell you about here in a second. You see Kentucky State, 49 nothing leaders on Central State. So Kentucky State, they're doing what they need to do. Unfortunately, Tuskegee is not holding up its end of the bargain as if Tuskegee could care less who goes to the SIC championship game. <laughs> well, I tell you, man, Kentucky State, they figure if we're going to go home, if this, if this is going to be the last game of the year, we're going to go out with a bang. And that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> they're up there in Frankfurt just putting the beat down on poor Central. Yeah, that's a rematch from earlier this season. And uh, Kentucky State going to go 2-0 right here against Central State. And what a job Charlie Jackson's done there at Kentucky State. It was a team that when he took it over and had, had all mostly freshmen on the team. They won seven games back in 2019, almost won the Western Division Championship. Mm -hmm. He comes back here in 2021 after the pandemic uh, killed the year in 2020. And he's got this team about to get its sixth win of the year. So 13 wins in two seasons for Kentucky State. Great job by him. So first down after the touchback, here's Terry Bryant with some room for the first time. He takes it all the way out near the 40-yard line. And that's a first big run for Tuskegee since that uh, first play of the game by Williams. Now that's a huge confidence builder. Huge confidence builder. They got away with a legal block on that one. They cut block by. You can't cut block a guy while he's been engaged by another guy. So they got away with something on that one. But it's still a huge, huge confidence builder. What a confidence building play for Tuskegee. You know, you give up a, a turnover and ends up as a touchdown. That's how you build. That's how you set building blocks for your next drive. It's been a seesaw battle. And right now Miles back on the high side as Bryant. Go to, to the middle of this Miles defense. It's hard to do. Takes it down near the 43-yard line. Three yards on the gain. It'll be second down. You know, tough sledding up the middle against those, those big guys up front from the Golden Bears. Nothing's going to be easy going through that way. Tuskegee just four first downs before that last first down by Terry Bryant. So he got it out to the 40, now out to the 43. Second and seven. Staying with that split backfield. Davis looking to throw. He's already two for two. Going deep again. Has a man down there. It is incomplete off the hands of Pritchett. Uh, two miles defenders there on the coverage. Dante Brown. You know, here's my problem with that. If, you, if you're Tuskegee, you have nothing to play for next week. You're not going anywhere next week. So now, why not sell out? You got nothing to conserve yourself for. Go ahead, sell out, man. Put your body on the line. Come down with that one, man. That's, you you got to reach all the way out there for that one. So now it's third and seven. So, well, Tuskegee actually has the Turkey Day Classic coming up against Alabama oh, well, yeah. State. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> they're still, they still have a game left to go. It's another opportunity for them to get a win. But right now, trailing by seven to the conference rival. Davis looking to throw again. Stands in the pocket, throws. That's picked off. Intercepted by Rodney Coleman Jr. And so each quarterback has an interception. Coleman took him back to Tuskegee territory. <laughs> Miles will get the football back. That's a great job by Coleman of just breaking on that. He's sitting at that DB position, sitting at that safety position up top, and then look at him just break on that ball. A great play by Rodney Coleman Jr., grad student from New Orleans. His second interception of the season. His preseason second team in the SIAC. And, and see, here's the dangerous thing what a young quarterback does. He sat there. Uh-oh, it's a flag. 
Oh, take off the interception. So, for Tuskegee, will keep the football, and they get a first down. So, forget about the uh, interception. Tuskegee's got it at the 47-yard line after the penalty. So but, a hold against Miles. But you know what I like what they did on the Tuskegee sideline? They're still they're talking to the young quarterback. They're saying, don't worry about it. Forget it. Let's keep on playing. Scratch that out your memory. I like what his teammates is doing for him. They're lifting him up after a bad play. And what he did, the reason he got that interception, he stared down his receiver. Can't do that as a quarterback. Got to keep those eyes shifty. And with these guys flying around for Miles, Davis to throw again. Steps up. Now tries to go straight up the middle. Takes a big hit. All the way down to the 41-yard line. Boy, Malik Davis is showing some toughness here in this first half for Tuskegee as we come up on the four-minute mark of the second quarter. You know, he, he didn't see that first receiver, so he pulled it down and went straight up the middle. But you got to realize, man, you usually go have a safety or a linebacker bearing down on you. If you come up the middle like that, and the big linebacker is going to make you pay William Hardy. Yeah, guys, William Hardy, Nictavius Floyd, Roberts, Shelton, all those guys. Those guys can hit. Second and four. There's a McKee in motion. And Bryant will try the left side this time, bouncing off tacklers again. And will take it down inside the 35. That'll be good enough for a first down. And Tuskegee looking for a late score here to get into this football game. It's funny, I wonder how, how many of our Kentucky State Kentucky State fans are right now just cheering, on, wishing all willpower, all good energy <laughs> to Tuskegee right now. <laughs> it's been a while for Kentucky State. They've been to an SIC championship game 2015. They got to the title, uh, 2016 they got to the title game. A big upset win at Tuskegee when Tuskegee was the number five team in the country. Helped them get to that point. So we get a maybe a flag or some kind of situation. Result of the play is a first down. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number five. Mm. Fifteen yard penalty from the end of the run. It will be first and ten. So a big penalty there for Tuskegee's. They looked like they were gonna keep moving the ball, but now they'll they'll have a first down, but they'll be further back than they are. And you know, you know, you wonder how that happens. It's, it's some receiver came over number five. A receiver came over toward the end of the play, and, and, and you know, you you always refer to the receivers as the prima donnas on the team. Yes. You know, <laughs> you know, come on, man, you're not even doing anything on the play. Stay on the outside, man. How you going to pick up a personal foul and knock us back like this when we're driving down the field? Well, those are the type of things you're talking about. Just little mistakes, little miscues that have kept us skiggy from. Staying successful as Bryant tries the left, right side again. Gets down to the 47-yard line. Pick up a three on this first down. So it is a first down, but Tuskegee would have loved to have been at the 35-yard line. It's a huge difference when you push all the way back to the 50 after, after you work so hard to get to the 35. You know, uh, that's one of those things, man. Like I say, the camera in the sky never lies. And when you have to watch that film, when you go in the film room the next day, oh, yeah, coach is going to let you have it. And usually he'll have some stadium steps waiting on you <laughs> in practice the next day. Three minutes towards halftime. We'll have highlights and stats and keep you updated on the other games in the SIAC and halftime. Here's Davis. Scrambles to the 43-yard line, so he made something out of nothing there. That could have been a big loss, but he does pick up four. He'll pick up a third down and three. I'm telling you, way to sense the heat from the outside because he had an outside linebacker coming off the edge, unblocked, untouched, and he still managed to slip up underneath that and pick up great positive yardage on the play. You know, that's just great awareness, having that, having that, eye, you know, that, that third eye working for you. Third and four. Got to get it to the 40. Four wideouts for Tuskegee. And they fake it, and Davis has a first down and more 
all the way down to the 35 yard line. So Tuskegee back with where they were just a few moments ago to the 34 yard line. And Davis with a good drive here at the end of the first half. And, and here's the thing when you're, when you're that outside backer, or you're the guy who has outside contained, you have to respect the quarterback on these read option teams. You have to respect them. You can't sell out and go that far inside. And basically, what happened, your guy who had outside contained, he sold out to try to get that running back on the inside, and that allows your quarterback to get to the edge. Three timeouts for the Golden Tigers. Davis looking, steps back, and just oh, try to throw it away there. <laughs> A little lofting pass there out of bounds. It'll bring up second down. You know, good thing about the young quarterback not trying to force it in there. You know, he saw the receiver wasn't there who he was looking for, so he just throws it out of bounds, throws it in the general direction of the receiver also because he didn't clear the tackle box. So him managing and throwing it into the general direction of the receiver and getting it out of bounds, great heads-up play by this young quarterback. Put him in this situation, and he's uh, he's made some he made some pretty good plays so far for Tuskegee. See what he does here on the second down. Davis going deep down the field. It is almost caught, but we're gonna have a flag as Hodges with the intended receiver, and this time Trey Giles was on the coverage, and uh, he's gonna get flagged. Yeah, they're running down the sideline. I think he might have got that back arm a little tangled up. You know, I couldn't really tell. We'll see it on the replay. But when you're running down that field, cornerback is one of the hardest positions on the field. You're on an island by yourself out there. Pass interference. Defense. Number 13. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Oh, Miles getting to the quarterback again. Malik Davis, he's been... Running all over the place. And Roberts again, and then you see Giles. He oh. said that left arm right there. He knocked the ball away, and then look at Coleman coming through. The Superman tried to get that interception. It wouldn't have counted, but. Yeah, he came up there. And I think he grabbed kind of the back shoulder pad, that, that horse collar area. He grabbed it from the receiver, and that's going to be a penalty every time. So Skiggy in the red zone at the 19-yard line. Here's Davis. Looking, fires, it is, oh, that looked like that was out of bounds. Hodges too far out of bounds, and that pass incomplete. We'll bring up second down. Hodges still looking for his first catch of the game. That 10-yard out, 12-yard out, 15-yard out, that's what we call the pro day pass. That's the pass that gets you to the next level. Anytime you have programs and, and they're running that NFL draft combine, the quarterbacks are tested on that 12-yard, 15-yard out. If you can throw that pass consistently and on the money, you might be able to make some money playing this guy. Second and 10. Four wideouts again for Tuskegee. And we've got another false start here against Tuskegee. So back on five more. False start. Offense. Number five. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. How does the receiver? You usually don't see the receiver get the false start penalty. All he's got to do is watch the ball. Mm -hmm. That's all he's waiting on. He's not listening to a snap count or anything. He's just waiting for the ball to move. Mm -hmm. I just got the penalty earlier that not the ski back. So uh, tough possession here for Hodges. See if he can make up for it here. Second and 15. Davis over the middle. Pass is complete. That's Pritchett. Oh, nice move. Cuts it back inside. They're trying to rip the ball away. Look at Pritchett go to work. All the way down to the 12-yard line. Is that a flag I saw? Yeah, something came flying in there late. I don't know if it was some debris from the sideline. Debris there. So Pritchett, his first catch of the game, the team's leading receiver. Let's see where they mark it. It's down near the 10. They'll mark it at the 12-yard line. It's going to be third down and a couple. Great job of patience in letting that crossing route develop, letting his receiver get all the way across the field and clear those linebackers and then hit them on the crossing route. Turn three o'clock running to ski. Still three timeouts remaining. Five on the play clock. Davis off the fake. He throws incomplete. 
Pritchett had it in his hand, but he couldn't hold on to it, and he could have had a touchdown. Looked like he landed on top of the defender in the end zone. And so now you've got fourth down. This is an interesting decision here for Coach Slater. He'll try to he'll try the field goal, make it a four-point game, or you go for it and see if you can still get a touchdown at the end. Yeah, he's going to think about that when he's going to call the timeout and sit there and think about it. But First, you know, Charlie, timeout. You know, he, half. Miles. Thirty seconds. Here's one of the good things about being the underdog, about not really playing for anything. You can go ahead Correction. and make those gutsy calls. That timeout is against Tuskegee. All right, we'll take a look back at the 2019 SIAC Championship. Another matchup between Miles and Albany State. That Miles defense was all over Albany State. Dante Edwards, a couple of big touchdowns. And, of course, the big interceptions by the Golden Bears as they took out Albany State for the second straight year. This time at Albany State, a 20-6 victory for the Golden Bears. And it could be that same matchup coming up on November the 13th. You see Edwards, <laughs> he's still tough to bring down. Had that big 100-yard day, 21-6 victory for Reginald Ruffin. <laughs> he avoids the Gatorade bath. But he celebrates his fourth SIAC title. And again, you'll get to see the SIAC championship game next Saturday. It'll be at the home of the West Division champion. They will take on Albany State, which won the East. And they clinched it against Morehouse last week. Should be a great game no matter who's in the championship game. Hey, you know, Ruffin showing that uh, Edwards isn't the only one with quick feet <laughs> over there. You know, Ruffin says, hey, I can move a little bit myself. You know, the way things have been going these past few years, man, you're going to have to start, you're going to have to rename that championship game to the Albany State uh, Miles Championship game, man. Well, Ruffin is the 1994 Gulf South Conference Freshman of the Year linebacker from <laughs> North Alabama, so he, he knows a thing or two about moving on the field. So Hooch Kick Arns will try a 30 yard field goal to pull Tuskegee within four. And that was that stretch when North Alabama was dominant in Division II. Oh, yeah. Snap is clean and. Hushkick Arns adds another one to the total now. Six for eight on the season. Didn't attempt a field goal last week, but he's got it here this week. So 21 to 17 is the score for Miles. Miles again. They clinched the title with a win today. The third straight SIAC West title they're looking for. And of course for Tuskegee, they're just trying to snap a two-game losing streak overall and a two-game losing streak to Miles today. And, you know, this This is just huge going into this, out. you know, going into the end of the season, taking up a win. You know, sometimes when, when you don't have that conference championship to play for, just the fact that you can be a spoiler, just the fact that you can ruin, you know, your upstate rivals all, all season right. by knocking them on out, man. That, those are some of the things that they probably heard all week long. You got a chance to ruin – your rival season and a lot of these guys a lot of these guys on both of these teams you know they're mostly from Alabama so they've been playing each other right. probably since Sandlot ball you know <laughs> they know they know each other really well you know, something to talk about when you go home for Christmas not much that you need to get ready for this game but this game has had so much importance to it over the years it has made that rivalry so much special so much more special it's his kick is over towards the oh, sideline oh, and uh, miscue there by the Miles kick returner. So Hill tried, probably thought he had more room. Actually, that's uh, Orlando Doss. Yeah, you got to be smarter than that, Doss. You know, you see that ball going to the sideline <laughs> like that, just get on out the way. It'll go out of bounds. Out of bounds near the 15 yard line. So. It'll be first down for Miles, deep in their own territory, and we'll see if uh, Miles will just one timeout. I think Miles probably just take this one into halftime. Miles will get the ball to start the third quarter. So, yeah, and here's the thing: Tuskegee can't stop the clock either. So you might see who is that in the backfield? Is that Edwards or Davis in the backfield? Uh, it's gonna be Edwards. I saw Davis earlier. One of our shots looks like he's on the sideline in street clothes. I have to confirm that as Edwards comes left side to the 11-yard line. Looks like both teams are content to take this one into the halftime break. Well, a lot of big plays and uh, a couple of miscues leading to touchdowns. 
Yeah, you can see Edwards and Johnson having a moment there together. They've been two of the big stars of this first half in this rivalry game, the 65th meeting between Miles and Tuskegee, 21 to 17 at the half. And Sylvester, this has been a, a very entertaining first half. A lot of different uh, plays have swung momentum back and forth. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting second half. It should be a very interesting second half, man. You know, both of these coaches, they're going to go out and talk to these teams, and, and especially Coach Ruffin. He's going to say, hey, man, we should be up by at least two touchdowns on Tuskegee right now. We'll, we'll be right back with halftime. Miles up 21-17 on Tuskegee. You're watching SIAC football on ESPN. Miles on top of Tuskegee, 21-17 in this rivalry game. Chance for Miles to get to the SIAC championship game for the third straight year. Well, everyone, I'm Kamari Darrington along with Sylvester Williams. And Sylvester, this has been a very entertaining first half. We've had a little bit of everything so far. I'm telling you, you had a little bit of everything. You know, we expected the running game, but we didn't expect the passing game. We've even had a backup quarterback come in right. and make his mark, man. You know, this has been an exciting game, exciting game so far. Tuskegee. They're not going to give it away easy to Miles. They're making Miles earn everything they have. Well, Miles is certainly hoping to do that here today as they take on Tuskegee. When we come back, we'll have a lot more action from Fairfield, Alabama. Miles on top of Tuskegee, 21-17.
Flashback to the 2019 SIAC Championship. It was all miles on this day for the second straight year as Dante Edwards and the defense came through for the Golden Bears as they held the Golden Rams just 170 yards of total offense. And a couple of big plays and Dante Edwards with a 100-yard game and a, three touchdowns in the game, 105 yards total. Auburn State was able to get back into the game, but Dante Edwards sealed the deal with this touchdown run as the Golden Bears won their second consecutive SIAC championship with a 21-6 win over Albany State. Could be the matchup again next Saturday as those two teams battling in the SIAC championship November 13th next Saturday on ESPN+. Plus. The West Division champion will host it coming up. Miles up 21-17 on Tuskegee as they try to host the SIAC championship next game next week. We have more from Fairfield in just a moment. Miles on top of Tuskegee, 21 to 17 at the half. Kamari Darrington along with Sylvester Williams and Sylvester. Boy, as we get ready to take a look at the halftime highlights, we had a huge bang to start the game. Each team scoring a touchdown in their opening play. I'm telling you, they got off the bus hot, right? They got off the bus hot and smoking, you know, straight out of the gate. That's how you excite a crowd. You know, the opening opening play of the game, quarterback straight up the middle, 73 yards. Hey, that's how you start a game. <laughs> And then, uh, not to be out down, Claude Newell said, hey, I can show you my arm. And Chris Brown says, hey, I can show you some speed. 75 yards later, a touchdown, but Jackson Spradlin missed the extra point. That made it 7-6. to six. And uh, Dante Edwards, he's just churning along 79 yards, rushing in this first half for Dante. 
And uh, that one led to his touchdown run of the first half. And then Newell, this time he throws a pick to Tony Johnson and then uh, and, uh, to Johnson. And then it leads to this play here. Uh, the couch and Tuskegee would uh, take advantage as Davis hits the Travion O'Neill for the touchdown. And that's the young sophomore coming in the game, making his presence felt, making his presence felt. Only mistake the young man made of the night right here, and that was a costly one, a costly one. There that put him Rob up. I'm sorry, Darius Roberts with the touchdown, and then I'd say it was a two-point conversion, but, hey, Davis, he showed a little uh, show a little fight there after the interception, but this one was called back by Rodney Coleman Jr., and so Tuskegee makes the most of his second chance. As you see down the sideline, there's the pass interference. You see Coleman there with a great play. That leads to a 30-yard field goal by Hushke Arns, and that will uh, and that ended the first half. So you see there the stats on the you see the score there 21-17. Tuskegee actually rushed for 119 yards in that first half. Miles 120 yards passing. So a little bit even yards per play, a little bit in favor of Miles in that first half. You know, Miles kind of dominated with the running game, and that's why they have that's why they have so much more. Um, you know, it, it, it throws you off. When I say dominated with the running game, when you see that, when you see the 109, you see the 119 yards on the screen, you say, well, wait a minute, what is he talking about? They dominated with the running game. But you got to remember, 73 of those yards came right. off of one play. Exactly. Just one play was 73 yards. But Miles is kind of dominated on the ground, and that ate up a lot of time on the clock, and that's why they have the lead that they have. Well, they have the lead because of the fumble in the end zone. But – that's why they dominated the total yards of possession because of the way they control the ball on the ground. Second half is coming up. Miles on top of Tuskegee, 21 to 17. This is AC Football on ESPN.
Miles with a 21-17 lead on Tuskegee as we get ready to start the second half. I'm Kamari Darrington along with Sylvester Williams and Sylvester. Let's talk about what's going to happen for this second half. Both teams have had big plays. Both teams have had miscues. What are you uh, looking for as the key to the second half? You know, now I think Miles is ready to settle down. They're ready to settle down. They, they've locked in on this freshman. I'm, not, I'm sorry, on this sophomore quarterback. They, they've let them know, hey, Hey, we're here to play. You're in the big time now. And so they're kind of locked in on them. So I would like to see a lot more Edwards in the second half. You're going to see Edwards going downhill, downhill, downhill. And then, like, anytime you have the, a running back going downhill, those safeties are going to start to come up. They're going to start to sneak up. And then watch, boom, we'll hit them over the top. And then I think – Miles may blow this thing open in the second half. Now for Tuskegee to avoid that, what will they have to do in the second half? They have to come up and they have to hit Edwards in the mouth. They have to hit Edwards in the mouth and stop Edwards on first down. Right now on first down, Edwards is picking up a nice chunk of change on first down every time he's getting about four yards, sometimes five yards every time he touches it on first down. If you want to stop him, you have to come up and you got to hit him in the mouth to start to start off on that first down. If Tuskegee can do that, if they can get Edwards off on, fourth, on first down and start creating some second and long, second and eight, second and nine, then you'll see the offense, you'll see that defense build up. That defense get a little bit of bravo, get a little bit of swagger with them, and you'll see a difference. And Tuskegee, they'll walk out of this thing with the upset win. Uh, senior day at Miles, 16 seniors taking their final walk on Sloan Alumni Stadium. They certainly would like to end with a win. And right now we've got the head coach of the Miles College Golden Bears, Reginald Ruffin. Uh, coach, uh, first half was uh, uh, up and down on both sides of the ball. A lot of things happened. What was your assessment of the first half? Uh, give it up big plays. You know, we should have made that tackle the first opening kickoff, you know, the offense gets the ball, just Tuskegee, and quarterback just goes up the middle, and we miss two tackles and big play, but we come back offensively, hit them with a big play. Uh, defensively, we're just making a lot of stupid penalties, uh, holding the guy, we get an interception and a pass interference. We just got to play better. Offensively, we just got to stick to our guns, mix it up, run, pass, and take what they give us, and uh, let's get out of this ball game with a win. Coach, what do you expect from your team in the second half? What do you think they'll have to do to uh, pull out the win today? Well, we get the ball back and establish the first five minutes is the most important thing. We need to take the ball down and make sure we score and uh, have a productive, uh, uh, you know, uh, possession this second half. All right, Coach, thank you so much for your time. Good luck in the second half. Thank you, guys. All right, Reginald Ruffin, the head coach at Miles College. So, as you see, they get the ball to start the second half, mm -hmm. and just like you said, they want to hit with Edward early and often and of course try to get to a ski out of the game here in the second half and this is so important that first drive to start the second half is the most important drive of the game you get out here and you establish who you are you let them know we are the two two-time defending champions you let them know you're at our field this is our senior day and I use this term so much, you know, maybe in the PC world today it doesn't sound right, right. but you got to hit them in the mouth. Right. You have to hit them in the mouth to start this second half off. And if Miles wants to walk out of here with a win, they're going to have to hit Tuskegee in the mouth. Yeah, it's going to be a hard-hitting second half, no question about that. As uh, the players getting ready to take the field for the second half, Miles getting the ball to start this third quarter, and we'll see if they are able to punch it in and uh, put up more points on the board uh, to try to put this game out of reach and try to get to the SIAC championship game for the third consecutive year. And, of course, Kentucky State is on top of Central State big in their game, so uh, that that is a the situation there for Kentucky State. They are the biggest Tuskegee fans right now <laughs> because they are the ones that would take the spot if Miles is unable to come up with the win. I'm telling you, you could feel all the positive energy, all the, the goodwill <laughs> energy coming all the way down I-75, all the way to to the state of Alabama, man, from, from Frankfort, from Frankfort, Kentucky. They are the biggest Tuskegee fans in the world right now. So if willpower, if willpower can help a team win a game, <laughs> Kentucky State's giving a lot of willpower down to, to uh, Tuskegee. Well, not a good start for Tuskegee in the second half. They'll need some more of that positive energy. Oh, well, Tuskegee as the kickoff goes out of bounds. So, um, Miles will 
get the ball at around the 35 yard line. Free kick out of bounds. By rule, the ball's placed at the 35 yard line. First down, Miles. So look at Claude Nolan that first half, 120 yards. Touchdown, also had an interception, so some good things and some bad things there from Newell. You know, and, and, and what you expect out of a quarterback, you know, out of your leader, you expect, especially when you have a running dominated team, you expect him to be accurate, you expect him to be on point, to keep things going, keep things going for that running back. And you know, seven out of 10 is a, is a you know, a good passing attack, but that one interception is huge. All right, on first down, and get it with Edwards, and Edwards to the 37-yard line. Picks up a two on the play. So that was uh, another running back for Miles. That is Zarius Keys on the carry. Redshirt Jr. Be second down. And see, this is what you want out of, out of Tuskegee. That first run, that first down, you know, you want to create a second and long, no second and shorts or second and mid, and mid. You want second and long. Second down and eight. Miles leading by four. These games have been tight. Last time they played here at Miles in 2018, Tuskegee actually led by 17. Miles came all the way back 131 27 in the final minute. Nice run by Keys. He gets out to the 40-yard line. Pick up a three. So Keys getting a couple of runs here early on in the second half for Miles. You know, I like how he got that first contact but kind of spun out of it and just kept those legs churning. That's what you want out of your backs. You know, you learn that in peewee, in peewee football. Keep your legs churning. Keep going forward. Don't let that first guy bring you down. At third and five. Got to get the ball to the 45-yard yard line. See if Newell have to throw this one on third down. Set up for a run though. Newell, quick throw left side. That pass is caught. It'll be a first down. It's, uh, again, Tuskegee trying to rip away at the ball. Marcus Lodge and uh oh some extra pushing there at the end of the play, but it will be a first down for Miles as they move the chains. You know what I love, what the receiver did. Watch when he catches this ball. He doesn't sit here and play around, juke around, and dance around. He just lowers his shoulders, goes straight forward. He knows where the first down is. He knows where he has to go, and he just lowers his shoulder and goes straight forward. No playing around. This is third and five. You got to get that first down. Good job. Pick up a seven on that third down, and we've got a flag. And it's going to go against Miles for a false start. False start. Offense, number six, five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Well, that penalty going on against another receiver, Chris Brown. Another receiver getting a false start penalty. You know, that, that there, there are a couple of penalties that are kind of unexcusable. You know, a false start, a center and a receiver should never get a false start in the game. Well, we've seen one on both sides. Tuskegee's got one now. Miles has one. So first and 15 from the 42. Four-point game. Still anybody's ball games. You expect when you have these rivalry games. Well, someone went the wrong way there. Noel just has to fall forward. He does pick up a yard, but uh, that one was not what, what we expected there for Miles. Yeah, that's not what somebody drew up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Coach Cedric Pearl, he's the offensive coordinator. He calls the plays for, for Miles, and I'm pretty sure he's like, hey, somebody didn't pick it up. And, and this is the funny thing about being up here in the booth and being on the sideline. You're wondering, who's the guy who, did, who's the guy who went wrong? <laughs> Got to look at Coach Pearl over there on the sideline. You told me to go left. No, I told you to go right. <laughs> Second down, Newell looking to throw, escapes the pocket. Now he's going to throw it at the last second, and that was almost intercepted by Matthews. That was almost an illegal forward pass right there. It just looked like his body was still behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down. 
You know, decision making. Decision making is key as a quarterback. I want you to look. He scrambles outside of the pocket, and he has about five yards in front of him. Big 72 is not going to catch him. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, the defender slipped, and he had about five yards in front of him. So you, sometimes you got to tuck that thing and, and just get up field and get what you can get. Now, if that had been the Alabama State game, that would have been a run. But at this point of the season, he's gotten – the confidence in his arm. He was looking for Colt Hudson that time, but a misplay there, and it could have been disaster for Miles. Third down now. Third long. Newell stepping up, gets it away, and the pass is caught. And all the way down, that was close to the first down. That's Lodge again. So Lodge gets to the 45 yard line. He'll be two yards short of the marker. And it'll be a decision time here for Reginald Ruffin. See, I like that. That play right there, that shows development and growth, development and growth in a quarterback. Instead of him trying to run to the outside and get away, he did what we, he stepped up in the pocket. He stepped up in the pocket and found his check down receiver and dropped it off to him. Now, he didn't quite pick up the first down, but it's really close. You know, it's close enough where you can make a, where you have to let coach, coach has to sit back and think about it for a second before he punts it away. So I like that. That's the type type of de development and growth you want out of your quarterback. You know, you, you spoke earlier, you said the Alabama State game, um, he probably would have took off running on that last one. Here's the thing about quarterbacks nowadays, man. It's been such a taboo thing for a quarterback to take off and run. So now quarterbacks, they're thinking, okay, I got to stay in passing. I got to stay in passing. I got to stay in passing. But every now and then, you got to take off and put, you got to put your feet in the ground and you got to run, you know? Well, uh, Noel is the one that was injured and he's coming over to the sideline. So mm. we'll have a new quarterback for the Golden Bears on this next play at least. So we'll see who they bring out to lead this offense. Looks like it is fourth down. Well, here's the thing about our mouse they've played four quarterbacks this year. They've had four different guys take some snaps and play quarterback this year. This is Jacob Milhouse on fourth down. He's going to run for the first down and get it and get more. Jacob Milhouse come, come into the game and give us a first down. Why don't you? He does it, and Miles moves the chains. And a big play for Milhouse on his first play of the game. The young man comes in, but, but Tyler Brown says, hey, welcome to the game. <laughs> You're not kidding. Boom! Wow, big hit there. And a big first down. That was a 12-yard gain from Millhouse. So, Jacob Millhouse, junior from Birmingham, played at Parker High School. Six-foot, 175-pounder. Four different, like I said, four different players have been under center for miles this season. So, Millhouse will take the snaps and Edwards again left side down inside the 30 to the 28 yard line I like how Edwards runs this ball man I, I keep saying this all game long you see how he runs he, when he senses the contact he goes ahead and covers up the ball with both hands he keeps the ball in the outside hand when he runs you know these are all things you teach all your young running backs here comes Edwards left side first down inside the 15 all the way down to the 14-yard line, Dante Edwards again picking up steam. That one good for 14. See, this this is a guy for all the kids out there. All these guys playing youth league football, playing high school football. When you want to see how a running back runs the ball, look at Edwards. Look at Edwards. Look how he runs. Look how he gets behind this ball. Behind his pass. Look how he protects the ball when he runs. He's putting on a clinic for running backs today. Miles looking to add to this four point lead. Inching here in the third quarter. Edwards looking to hold the shoulder. Those giga guys go flying. Edwards takes it down to the 11 yard line. That one good for three yards. And it'll be second down. And looks like Edwards. With that carry, will be at least close to 100 yards. Well, once the stats update, we'll know for sure <laughs> in a second. I'm telling you, man, well deserved, man. He, he is running. He is lowering his shoulder. He's giving it to you, man. And, and that.
that is what you want out of a running back. <laughs> you want a running back, pick up those hard yards, just running straight ahead at you. He's had 500 yard games coming into the day. Now Edwards looking for the end zone. Dante Edwards driving down to the two yard line. Again, tough to bring down on the first contact. And he just continues to churn yards out for the Golden Bears. And look at him showing the patience, showing that dexterity, just moving, and the strength also, the strength and the power. I've been so impressed by Dante Edwards. And here he goes again, Edwards to the end zone. He knows where to find it. Touchdown, and it's time to flex here for Dante. Oh, it's only right, man. Don't throw up them arms, man. Throw up the biceps, brother. It's only right for you to go ahead and flex because you've been running, you've been running over Golden Tigers all evening long. Well, you know he does. He is a, he is, he is pretty stacked right there. It's a <laughs> tough, tough to break down. So he is showing his results from the weight room. So now a ten point lead for Miles as that drive started at the thirty five yard line and. Took all or six minutes off the clock, and the extra point by Spradlin makes it 28 to 17. 8:50 to go. Second touchdown of the day for Edwards, his eighth of the season. Miles up 28 to 17 on Tuskegee. Since 1898, the concept of higher learning for African Americans has thrived and flourished here in the metropolitan Birmingham, Alabama. Miles College is a senior private liberal arts historically black college with roots in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church that motivates and prepares students to seek knowledge which leads to intellectual and civic empowerment. The Miles College education engages students in rigorous study, scholarly inquiry, and spiritual awareness, enabling graduates to become lifelong learners and responsible citizens who help shape our global society. Through its coursework, community development projects, and philanthropic partnerships, Miles College students graduate with the knowledge and wisdom needed to reach their full potential and thrive in a shifting 21st century landscape. Learn more today about Miles College. To donate, learn more about course information, or to schedule a visit, go to miles.edu. Since 1837, historically black colleges and universities have been fulfilling their purpose to educate and empower. Since 2009, the Home Depot's Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant Program has also been powered by a purpose to update, upgrade, and uplift HBCU campuses. Today, 44 million votes, $4.1 million, and 147 grants later, we remain inspired by the people, the passion, and the power of HBCUs to continue our purpose. Learn more at retoolyourschools.com. Purple Marching Machine provided in the, the boom with this Miles and Dante Edwards doing so on the field right now. Miles up 28 to 17 on Tuskegee. And uh, Sylvester, uh, another dominant run by Dante Edwards. And uh, he's got 112 yards rushing in this ball game on 18 carries. He has been a workhorse here this afternoon. A workhorse, man. This is what you expect. This is what you want out of a running back, man. Give it to him. Give it to him a lot and deliver the results, man. That's exactly what you want, man. He's averaging, what, right around six yards a carry. Man, you, it doesn't get much better than that, man. It doesn't get much better. Well, he extends the miles lead now to Skiggy. The largest deficit of the game. Spradlin kicks off. Miles inching closer to the SIAC title game, but here's Pritchett trying to make something happen. And he break a tackle, he does, and that's going to be a face mask. Uh, I guess the ref official didn't see it. It was like he had it there. 
And a good tackle there by uh, Colin Woods. Hey, number one rule in football, if the referee doesn't see it, it's not a penalty. <laughs> if he doesn't see it, let's see if he grabs a hold of that face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he oh, turned, wow. He turned the whole hell. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey. Well, they missed one there. Ref didn't see it. Well, that, this is what he'll say to the uh, to the uh, Tuskegee coaches when then they they see it. All right, so back out there, Lee Davis, and the handoff to Bryant. Bryant slipped down as he got towards the fifteen. There'll be a loss of a yard. That's that turf monster jumped up and grabbed his grabbed him by the ankles, man. That's a tough one right there. It, when you see the you see the hole, you see where you need to be. Right. And uh, like we say, your, your cleats weren't long enough. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 5'11", 230-pound junior from Prentice, Mississippi. Just couldn't get the big body to catch up with the cut. Second and 11. Eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. And that drive by Miles took over seven, six minutes off the clock. Five on the play clock here. Three wide outs. Davis, empty backfield, under pressure. He escapes it momentarily, and he's able to get it out to the 20. Stumbling down, but he does pick up six yards on the run. It's going to be third down, but a more manageable third down for Tuskegee. And I like that. He avoided the pressure and just tucked it and just took what he could get. And, you know, put that in. You know, one thing I like about the balance, you know, you put your hand in the ground just to give you about two or three more yards right. instead of falling down. Good balance by the young man. The Slater upset about something there. <laughs> you know, down. Coach Slater isn't known for being super excited on that sideline, but something got to him down there. Sometimes you don't even know he's on the sideline. He doesn't move at all. Third down, Davis over the middle, knocked away. Nice play that time by the defender. That once again was Jamari's Brown. Got to do a little bit better job of leading your receiver. I don't know. He did do a pretty good job of leading. Let me stop talking. Man, He did a good job of leading the receiver. That was just a heck of an effort by Brown to get out there and break that thing up, man. Good job. Jamarius. Called his name a couple of times. He's made some nice plays for Miles, and you can see it now. Golden Bears are trying to put a stranglehold on this lead. And Robinson back near midfield. The punt for Duff. And this one will be fielded at midfield by Robinson. And just be pushed out of bounds. That's going to be a flag. Well, they caught that one. Yeah, they caught that one. That's going to be a late hit personal foul right there. Just that was a Trujillo on the return, but Johnson uh, looks like he's going to be whistled for the flag. And, you know, that's one of the most frustrating things when you're dealing with the youngsters. You know, you know. I used to coach. I used to coach uh, collegially at one time. And, and the thing is, you know, you got a youngster. He'll make a heck of a play. One one play earlier, a couple of plays earlier, and then he'll come right back down the field and make a bonehead play. And like, you can't be the same guy <laughs> I was just talking to. You right. can't be. You can't be. Short memories on both um, both ways. Good plays and bad plays. But you know, I used to... After the play, dead ball, personal foul, kicking team, number 31, 15-yard penalty from the end of the return, Automatic, first down. Terrific field position for Miles College. They have an 11-point lead over Tuskegee late here in the third quarter.
Miles leading Tuskegee 28 to 17, and they got the ball in the Tuskegee 27 after a short return and then the 15-yard personal foul penalty. So Miles with a great opportunity here to put some more distance between them and Tuskegee and get them closer to the SIAC championship next week. Play fake, and the throw is Newell's back in the game, and the pass is caught down to the 13-yard line. That one good to DeAndre Harvey, so Harvey... Another big catch for him. He picks up another 14 yards. Well-designed play right there. You have your tight end coming across behind the line of scrimmage and running kind of that little out route to the flat. Well-designed play to get them wide open out there in the flat to pick up the big first down. Andre Harvey has had a couple of big catches in this game. The second catch, Richard Jr. from Douglasville, Georgia. There's the carry. Coming left side. That is. That was Keys again. And Keys getting up some carries, you know, earning his time, taking advantage. Of, I think Keys, like you said earlier, Kingston Davis was in street clothes, so take advantage of the backup being out. You never know. And this is one thing about football. You are one injury away from being an all-star. <laughs> You're one injury away from being the next best thing. So you got to always keep that helmet ready for you to come in the game. Next man up, they always say. Uh, Key is getting his opportunity here. And 540 left here in the third quarter. Miles has extended this lead with the touchdown run by Edwards on their last possession. Now the chance to add to the lead. Also got a fumble, re fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown by Kadarius Roberts. Here comes Keys, cuts it back inside the five. Look at him knocking him in over. He's still going. He finally stopped near the three-yard line. They're going to mark it at the two. And, and it's going to be first and goal for, for the Golden Bears. I like that Keys, man. Not a real big guy. But he's still putting his shoulder down. Look at him oh, delivering wow. the blow. That was on uh, with the Apple on one of the top tacklers on the team. Now I'm a I'm a, I'm a linebacker, so you know I'm gonna take I'm gonna take up for my <laughs> linebacker. He was kind of slide. He, he was, was slipping, back right, yeah. but he but he still. But hey, Key still delivered the blow though. I like that. I like that from Key. Well, he finished his fall to the ground. That, that's all. We'll, we'll go with that. First and goal for the for the Golden Bears at the two yard line. Keys. Let's see if we can finish the drive. No, not that time. This time, Antonio Kennan Jr. First time we called his name today. Redshirt sophomore from Atlanta. Yeah, from MLK High School. I remember I called one of his games in high school. I remember that young man a couple of years ago. Six feet, 190. Makes a nice play. Makes it second and goal back at the six-yard line. So a four-yard loss for Keys that time. It's funny, man. I'm getting old, man. Some of these, <laughs> some of these kids, man. I, I call some of their dads, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, lob in the end zone. Can't get there. They try to hit. That's Hudson, and on the coverage, Roderick Stewart, one of the top secondary players in the league. Mm-hmm. You know that. Throwing that little, uh, what we like to call flag route, a corner flag route or anything, corner route, flag route, is a tough, tough route for a, quarter, for a quarterback to throw. He needs to put it in a space where it's either going to go out of bounds or his guy's going to catch it. But you got to have your receiver on line with you too. Tough be pass. be third and goal. Sorry about that. going to be third and goal. From the six. It's Edwards in the backfield again. And here he comes. Breaks a tackle. And only gets down to near the three-yard line. Oh, boy. They piled on top of him there at the end. But you know what I like about Edwards, though, man? He was down in the backfield. He should have been tackled in the backfield, but he runs through arms. You know, you're not going to sit there and tackle Edwards with your your arms. You got to bring some shoulder pads behind you. You know, I used to have a coach who says, man, when you tackle, bring your hips with you. <laughs> you got to bring your hips with you when you tackle. One hits. 
made the play that time. So it's 265 freshman from Jacksonville. So Spradlin now, 21-yard field goal. They get a two-touchdown lead, and he knocks it through. And the Golden Bears extend the lead, 31-17. to 3.02 left to play in the third quarter. Golden Bears trying to get to the SIAC championship game. As a global bank, our game plan is to help clients manage their money. We're a team of challengers, thinkers, and go-getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, SIAC, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. website or in the new hometown fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the hometown fan app today. you love to play academy sports and outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your academy store miles 296 yards of total offense the balance 152 yards passing 144 yards rushing and now 31 to 17 on Tuskegee. Just over three minutes left in the third quarter. Reginald Ruffin looking for his third consecutive SIAC West title and his sixth trip to the SIAC championship game. And now his team is leading by 14. And Sylvester, if you're Tuskegee, I mean, now it's a situation where you probably are in. A, a situation where running the ball is probably not going to be much of an option here late on. Yeah, now you got to let that sophomore go ahead and put it in the air. You're down two touchdowns, down 14. Oh, and then get some help here as that kick goes out of bounds. That's going to drive Coach Ruffin crazy. And you notice, I, I've noticed that's what our mouths have been doing. They've been trying to kick their kickoffs to, toward that sideline. You know, I guess kind of a version of the high sideline trying to move it over to the sideline like that but it's a high it's a high risk high reward type of kick because if it goes out of, bounds, out of bounds if it goes out of bounds, bounds 35 yard line you first know, down to Tuskegee now you lose all that great field position ball on the 35 yard line so Tuskegee and Malik Davis will try to lead this offense now Bryson Williams started the game at the 73 yard touchdown run on the opening play from scrimmage of the ball game. Since then, a 23-yard touchdown reception from Davis to Travion O'Neal. And then Arn Swoosh kick with a 30-yard field goal. That was been in for Tuskegee. That was first and 10. And Davis, with a low snap, picks it up, and he will be sacked at the 27-yard line. That big play made by Jalen Thomas, the, the grad student from Sylacauga, Alabama. You know, and here's the thing: when you're when you're down, and they well, when when you have your opponent down, and you know he's going to throw the ball, you know that pass is going coming. Man, as a defensive lineman, you're you know your butt's high in the air. You're down. You're ready. You you are. All guns blazing coming forward. This is what they live for. This is what the big defensive end lives for. He knows. 
he's coming off that edge trying to get that quarterback. Loss of seven on the play. Second time that Davis has been sacked. He's going to be sticking a big, big hit at the 19-yard line. That time, William Hardy brought the wood. I'm telling you, the freshman linebacker coming in on the blitz. Oh, my goodness. That's one of those things, man. You open up the nostrils on that one right there, man. Oh, my goodness. He won't feel that right now, but he will feel that in the morning. That one was a big, big hit. Lost all the way back to the 20-yard line, so Tuskegee going the wrong way on this possession. It's now going to be third and 25. Got to get the ball the way to their own 45. You get hit like that, sometime the quarterback sitting over there talking to his offense like, who let that truck on the field? <laughs> Four on the play clock. See if Davis can make a play. Escapes the pocket this time. Stays behind the line of scrimmage. Gets it away. And that pass is complete. Over to Jonathan Montreville. Gets it to the 35-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. So a 15-yard reception, but not enough for a first down. You know, that's a good job of what we like to call a scramble drill. Quarterback rolled out the pocket. Originally, he was going deep. The wide receiver was going deep on that play. But what happened, um, Montreal, Montreal, he realized that the quarterback was scrambling, so he broke off his route, and he came back to kind of help out his quarterback. That's, a, that's, what we like, that's what we call a scramble drill. That was a, pretty, that was a really good job by the receiver and the quarterback working together. But too bad they just couldn't get the first down on it. Fair sacks ending. Snuffing that one out as Duff punts this one. Robinson will let it bounce. Take some miles bounce. And we'll stop it at the 36-yard line. Well, uh, Sylvester coming into the day, we knew that uh, Miles was going to go for his third straight championship. They needed a win today. Of course, it's a, the start of the season with two SWAC opponents that played Alabama State and Southern. Played them very, very well, and I think mm -hmm. that set them up for this SIAC part of the schedule. You know, here's the thing about taking those money games, as we like to call it. You know, you play two teams that are, that are bigger than you, and they expect to beat you. Now, it's two things. You can go out there and roll over and just let them beat the dog crap out of you, or you can go out there and fight, pick up some learning lessons, and get you tougher in the year, you know, in the year, in the upcoming year. And I think that that's exactly what Miles did. Took Alabama State to overtime in the season opener as Newell goes down the middle, wide open. Uh, well, Anthony Robinson cuts it back inside the 25, all the way down to the 22 yard line. A big play for Miles. And you can see it now. They are sensing the finish line. Mm -hmm. And that's a nice gutsy call by, by the uh, offensive coordinator. I mean, how do you have a gutsy call when you're up by 14? The thing is, everybody in the stadium is expecting you to run the ball, but you give a little play action, and that frees up your receiver, and he's running down the field untouched. You know, great, great play call. That one was a 42-yard reception for Robinson. Oh, five yards away from 200 passing yards. Final final seconds of this third quarter. Final play. Barna penalty. Oh, what a spin move by Edwards. <laughs> he got to the 18-yard line. He only picks up so four yards, but that is going to be on the highlight reel. I'm sorry, that was uh, Keys. I'm sorry. That was uh, that was that was Zarius Keys. That's going to be on his highlight reel. Final play of the third quarter. We go to the four. Put your fours up. Miles on top of Tuskegee, 31 to 17. We're coming back to Fairfield in just a moment here on ESPN.
31-17, Miles, 15 minutes away from the SIAC championship game for the third straight year and a chance to host it for the second time in those three years. Another date with Albany State awaits. Albany State Golden Rams winning the East, clinching it last week with their win over Morehouse. And Miles trying to clinch that title with another win over their arch rival, looking for their third straight win. Right now, second down and seven from the 19-yard line. Noel in the shotgun with Edwards, kind of a pistol formation there. Off the play fake, wide open, and Ooh. drops. Well, I messed that one up for him. <laughs> DeAndre Harvey, he had a couple of catches, couldn't hold on to that one. It's third down. Hit him in the worst place possible. Hit him in his hands. <laughs> That's what it was, I tell you, man. A the quarterback, they're going to have that conversation <laughs> when they get in the film room. Come on, bro. You got to help me out some. Well, he was uh, – he was kind of move, he was kind of moving, but like you said, just that's why he's an H back probably. I'm not a wide receiver. <laughs> Any of it, it's third down. The H backs can catch too. That one off the mark. Third and seven. Ruffin does not want another field goal. Going deep for the end zone. He's got his man. Touchdown, Chris Brown. His second of the game. And he lets one of the fans knows how he feels about it. <laughs> That one good for 19. Just a beautiful ran route and just a beautifully thrown ball. All that is is a fade route down the sideline. Just a nine route, and he just throws it over the top, and he just boop, cradles it on in there for the touchdown catch, man. This is a pretty good ratio. Two catches, two touchdowns for Chris Brown. Not too bad. One for 75. This one a little closer, 19 yards. And Miles pulling away from there. Rivals 38 to 17 now is the score as Spradlin knocks in the extra point. 14 52 to left to play in the fourth quarter. Newell to Brown for the second time today. 38 to 17. Miles on top. Miles dancers entertaining the crowd and the Miles football team entertaining the crowd as well on the field. 38 to 17, a 17 to nothing clip here in the second half. Kamari Darrington along with Sylvester Williams and Sylvester the uh, 360 yards of total offense has been Dante Edwards. Now the big play by Claude Noel and uh, uh, Tuskegee. This has been an uncharacteristic season for them defensively and it just has continued here this afternoon. 
You know, here's the thing. Somebody told me when it rains, it pours, and that's exactly what's happened to Tuskegee tonight. They started off hot. They started off competitive, but Miles got on a roll, and they just started to blow this thing wide open, and that's what they're doing. Return by Stephen Hodges. So he takes it out to the 30-yard line. So where another... Uh, start for Tuskegee offensively. And, you know, here's the thing, what you want out of Miles, your offense is kind of clicking on all cylinders. You got a quarterback, he's thrown for over 200 yards. Your running backs ran for over 100. You got a receiver right there at 100 yards receiving. You know, everything's clicking. All of these guys are working. If it wasn't for that one interception, you know, you would have almost had a perfect game on offense. You know, now 12 for 18 for 213 yards on those two touchdowns. He's also been sacked once. Davis 4 for 9 for 64 yards so far. He's been sacked three times. He's going to put it up on first down, or he may not get to. He does get it away. And that pass incomplete caught by the other quarterback there, Williams. It'll be second down. I'm telling you. Oh, Williams caught that on the side. I wonder what happened to Williams. Was he, was he injured over there, or? It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell what's going on there on the Tuskegee sideline, but they got with Malik Davis, and uh, Davis led a drive or two. And uh, nicely done there. Well, he, he caught it with the one hand. Maybe something's wrong with his left hand over there. Huh? I don't know, but you start off the game with a 70-yard touchdown run. You know, you expect to, to play a little bit more. <laughs> well, in any event, second and ten. Here's Davis, just trying to get out of trouble. He's tackled, sacked again. This time, Kadarian Jones made the play, the sophomore from Donaldsville, Louisiana. Yeah, and here's the thing about this Miles defensive front. Like I said, I was talking to the sports information director, uh, Mr. Moore, last night. He said they play eight guys on that front. They play eight defensive linemen. They, they rotate in and out, and they all come, and they all come with a fury these men do. They love getting to the quarterback. They had 20 sacks on the season coming into today. So add five to four, well five to the total as we have third and 20. They got to get the ball to their own 30 to Tuskegee. And Davis going to go deep. Has a man behind the defense and it is incomplete. Oh. Steven Hodges still looking for that first catch of the game. It just could not get to that one. And it's going to be another punt for Tuskegee. And here's the thing. He put it where it needs to go to. Oh, God, it hit him. It went right off of the fingertips. I know it was over his shoulder, but you, and, and, and the way I was taught, anytime the ball touches your hands, you have to catch it. That's a young man that's got over 1,200 career receiving yards just to find the handle this afternoon. So another punt upcoming for Ryan Duff, who's been a busy man this afternoon. will be his sixth punt today. This will mm. be returned by Robinson up the sideline. Cuts it back at the 25. And they might have stepped out of bounds before that. Let's see how, where they mark it. And again, Miles will get great field position on this possession. I want you to look at the block from the up back. I mean, from the from the other uh, punt returner on this one. They're going to call it. <laughs> they're going to wave it off. They're going to wave it off. Okay. It, it was one of those hits that just looked so gruesome it had to be a penalty. <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> whoever the other uh, returner was. There is no foul on the play. Front and legal. The hit, the hit looked so ugly. Let's look at him. Let's look at him, Cody. Oh. oh, my goodness. That's a, that's a good football play, unfortunately. And what I like Somehow Robinson stayed in bounds. What I like about it, he knocked one man down, and then he went to go and get another one. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, you know, the play's not over yet. You got to keep going. They actually uh, marked him out of the 34, so they pulled it back. So let's, let me first down. So now if you're Miles, you just want to work on a little clock, or maybe you want to add some more points to the board. Who knows? Sometimes you got to leave a message. You got to send a message. Hand off up the middle. 
these young backs for Miles getting a lot of play today because of Davis not being in. That's Hicks with another carry. He picks up two on first down to third two. And I think the thing is, you know, Edwards is already going over 100. So why not go ahead and let some of these young backs get in and get some of the playing time, get some of the carries. Because, you know, you can practice as much as you want. You can do a lot as you can, a lot of stuff in practice. But you can't get that game time feel unless you're playing in the game. They see number 20, Kingston Davis, top five rusher in the SIAC. Not in the lineup today. Hicks and Keys of Provided some good sparks. Here's Newell again going to the end zone. Oh, off the hands! <laughs> yeah, I know yeah, what you feel. That one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think everybody felt that one. Uh, unfortunately, there. <laughs> Poor Rashad. I know. <laughs> Rashad Nelson couldn't hold on to that one. <laughs> I don't usually excuse the foul language, but I, <laughs> but I get it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> we apologize to anybody that actually got to hear that one, but uh, if you can read lips, you can see how he feels about that one. I think, well, we'll go wait a couple more minutes for it's safe <laughs> because there's still plenty of time left in this game, but, of course, Miles and Albany State played earlier this season. That pass is caught. Oh, what? My, what a play. That's Cohen Hudson. And... Let's continue this drive because Miles is knocking on the door to score again. Oh, no, took a big hit. And see, I like that from Newell. He knew the hit was coming, and he still stood tall and delivered. And then even better on the other end, Hudson with the catch. Hudson goes up and brings it down with two hands. Second reception for him. Seven different players have caught a pass from Newell today. He's spreading the wealth. Now the runner with Hicks. Hicks runs it down to the 14-yard line. Pick up a six on first down. You know, the quarterback spreading the ball around like that, you know, being a, a former poor college student, you know, that's how you get extra food <laughs> exactly. in the cafeteria line <laughs> from your teammates, man. Share. Share to the receivers. They'll take care of you. Second down, Miles. Working on their offense right now. As so they are 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes away now from another SIAC West title and another trip to the SIAC championship game. X again. Drug, drug attack to the 12. Add two to Hicks's total. Yeah, when you see Hicks, he doesn't look like that big of a guy, but, you know, he's a hard runner, man. And that's what I'm noticing about a lot of these miles, these Golden Bears running backs, man. They run hard. No easy wins, you know, dealing with these running backs from Miles College. It'll be third and a couple. Ball's got to get to the 11. Tuskegee would love to get a stop here, get some, get some confidence again there. Their SIAC schedule will be over after today, but they'll be playing Alabama State on Turkey Day. Here comes Newell up the middle, sliding down to the three-yard line, and that'll be a first and goal for the goal for the Golden Bear. I like that Newell made what we like to call a business decision. <laughs> That's a business decision. You know, that end zone was real close, but that free safety was closer. <laughs> so pick up of eight, and Golden Bears are... Getting ready to score one more time. Come up on 10 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. So Benedict finished off a 34-30 win over Lane. Kentucky State 63-0 over Central State. But it's going to be Miles going to the SIAC championship game. A touchdown for Hicks. As Brandon Hicks gets into the end zone and Miles. That's the third touchdown of the second half. 23 to nothing right now in the second half against this Tuskegee defense. And this is the thing, man. They came out here in this second half, and starting with that first drive, they established dominance in the second half. They said, hey, man, we're going to blow this thing out of the water. We played around with you long enough, Tuskegee. Let's go ahead and send you back home, send you back to Tuskegee with a frown on your face. Well, that would be a good trip back to the historic campus of Tuskegee University. 
45-17 is the score. Brandon Hicks into the end zone. Another running back in the end zone for the Golden Bears. Around the SIAC today, Central State, Kentucky State, Kentucky State winning at 63 to nothing. Had 422 rushing yards in the game. Oh, Kentucky State could run the football. Benedict defeated Lane 34 to 30. That's a final score. Also today, Morehouse and Clark, Atlanta are squaring off in Atlanta in that, that huge matchup. Fort Valley and Albany State in the Found City Classic. And Edward Waters taking on Savannah State. A little bit later on this afternoon. So, again, the final weekend of the SIAC regular season. And this one comes down to Mitchell at the 10-yard line. And Mitchell able to break outside. But, again, Golden Bears all over it. He's out near the 19. And now you see some extracurricular activity after the play. Some, some frustration for out of Tuskegee. And uh, Miles a little bit, uh, they're a little bit more emotional as well. Yeah, you know, you, you got a team down, man. Game's over. Here's the dangerous thing about playing a game. You know, it's not not a traditional rivalry, but like I say, all of these kids are from Alabama. So they, you know, most of the kids are from Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. So they've been playing against each other for just about all of their lives. So they know each other on and off the field. You can't let emotions take you out of this because what happens if you get suspended or you get kicked out of this game, that affects next week's game. That affects your championship game. Don't want to get penalized, get kicked out for something stupid. That'll affect your chance of getting the ring. And I'm telling you, man, you know, I, I played uh, at Eastern Kentucky University, the Ohio Valley Conference. We ended up winning the uh, Ohio Valley After Conference. After the play. On sportsmanlike conduct, kicking team, number 86, 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. Correction, number 81, and that is his first unsportsmanlike conduct towards disqualification. You know, we. Alan Woods, the junior from Mobile. We end up winning the championship, our Ohio Valley Conference championship, my freshman year. And I thought this was something that just happens every time. Right. You know, every year we're supposed to do it. And we to, trust me, my next three years, we didn't sniff it. We didn't get close <laughs> to it. So you don't want to lose your chance at winning a, a conference championship by doing something silly. 45-17, score right now. 
Tuskegee. Shut out so far here in the second half. Now 169 total yards. Deep drop from Davis. Nowhere to go with the football. Gets it away and out of bounds. That's the kind of the way the second half has gone for the Tuskegee Golden Tiger offense. It's been tough to let in the second half, you know. It, they start off that play, they have a little glimpse of light, and it just closes down, closes down, closes down, and then boom, nothing. They had 172 yards at the end of the first half. Currently, they've lost three yards in the second half. It's just, just been nothing doing for the Tuskegee offense. Second down for the Golden Tigers. Four wide outs. The handoff to Goodlow. Goodlow, nice run there to the 38. Pickup of three. Coach uh, Rashad Washington, he's the uh, defensive coordinator for Miles. You know, he handles all the play calling duty for the defense. So he, he's put together he's put together his case for a raise in the second <laughs> half, man. <laughs> Sick. Get that guy some more money. Well, it didn't look good on that first play, but uh, <laughs> since then, to, uh, uh, Miles' defense has done a, a solid job. So 73 yards on one play. Everything else just uh, 96 yards. So that much for the Tuskegee offense. Third down, Davis right side. That pass is dropped. Knocked away. It's been a tough day for Stephen Hodges. Trey Giles on the coverage. Yeah, it has been a tough day for Hodges, man. He just can't seem to get going. You know, they're targeting him. They're trying to get it to him, but he just can't pull it in. But that's great coverage out there by Trey. Trey got out there, broke on the ball, didn't get the pass interference. He waited till the ball got there, and then he swat at it, man. That's just good defense. That's good coverage from Trey. Pritchett, the leading receiver, just has one catch. Hodges has no catches, so... A tough day for the receivers who had to play big for Tuskegee to pull off the win here today as Duff punts it. And this one is taken by Robinson. Robinson up the sideline, trying to add another highlight to Miles' day today. And he's into Tuskegee territory. So another drive to start in Golden Tigers territory. Miles, the SIAC West Championship on the line. That's what it's all about, the SIAC Football Championship next Saturday. Albany State looks like it's going to be taking on Miles here at Miles College. The last time that Miles hosted Albany State here for the title, they won it 50-20. to 20. As here's a run for 
another Miles running back. Aaron Frazier. Aaron Frazier, 185 freshman from Lochapoca, Alabama. So he gets his first carry of the game. And uh, so it's going to be a first down at the 30 yard line. So a 15 yard run. Nice run on first down. Nice run by the freshman getting in there, earning his scholarship. Miles is content with taking the air out of the ball now. Millhouse back in the game at quarterback for the Golden Bears. You know, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of hoping that uh, Chris Brown got one more catch so he could get over 100. There's Millhouse and slide down to the 26-yard line. So now kind of starting to look ahead. And Miles and Albany State did play earlier this season. And Albany State 31 to three over mm -hmm. Miles. It's kind of a surprise, considering where Miles has been the last few years. But the East has dominated the West in the SIEC this season. Yeah, w without a doubt, the East has been the stronger conference. And you know, Savannah State's kind of on the outside looking in with their record. They are. <laughs> They're from the day. The people over there in uh, East East Georgia are sitting up there saying, hey, man, we should just get the two best teams. <laughs> and that kid is a uh, Frazier. Has a spin in the backfield. Don't have a loss on the play. Back to the 27-yard line. Loss of the yard. And uh, you look at, uh, look at Kentucky State, six wins. Lane with six wins. Miles is going to have six wins. But look at the East. I'm not sure what happened before Valley State and Albany State, but Albany State, number three in that South, in that in the regional ranking, had a chance to potentially host a first round playoff game in the playoffs. And Savannah State, if a couple of things work out the way, they might end up in the playoffs as well. Mm -hmm. Here's Millhouse. He's just trying to make something happen. Cuts it back in the 15. I think it's a big hit at the end from Sean Cross. And Millhouse will have to come out. But, uh, a couple of nice runs here by Millhouse. I like that. Just keeping his eye downfield, avoiding the pressure. Still had the option to throw it, but he'll go ahead and tuck it and just keep hope alive, man. Keep on moving down the field. I'm good for 14, so it's first and 10. The 13-yard line, Millhouse having to come out for a play. So they bring Noel back in. I don't know if they'll call a timeout here. And then try to get. They do call a timeout. Miles, a 45 to 17 timeout. on Tuskegee. For the second half, Miles. Extended to a media timeout.
Reginald Ruffin, a little smile now on the sideline, a little bit looser on the sideline as his team up 45-17 to on Tuskegee with six minutes left in the fourth quarter on their way to the third consecutive SIAC championship in Sylvester. Uh, you look at the way that this team plays, especially at home, it's going to be a tough game next week between Albany State and Miles. There's a throw for a touchdown. Hey. DeAndre Harvey, his third catch of the game is a touchdown. And the, gold, and the Golden Bears, 50 spot here on Tuskegee. That's a way to make up for that drop pass. Go ahead and catch you a wide open touchdown like that, man. You know, good play fake right there and just finding the tight end, crossing the field. Nice pitch and catch, finding the man in open space, man. When it when everything works, it, it works, man. And, that, and that's the sad thing when you're Tuskegee. You're on the opposite end of that. And it, ooh, it hurts. Jackson Spradlin's extra point is good. And makes it 52. The 17, 559 to play here in this fourth quarter. So Harvey getting into the end zone for the second time this season. Didn't have a lot of receiving yards coming into the day, but has 47 yards on the day. And Reginald Ruffin now going to be going for his fifth SIAC championship. It's going to be the sixth time he has reached the SIAC championship game. Six SIAC West title. And, uh, this is the program now that you know, Tuskegee has been synonymous with HBC football for so many years and it's kind of been the standard of the SIAC. Now you see Miles kind of taking that step up and uh, being that 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 other uh, that being the other program on this side of the of the corn. You know, it's interesting how things move and how things change. You know, every you know, everybody has their run, and Tuskegee has had their run. They've dominated the SIAC and, you know, been one of the main talks of HBCU football. And now Coach Ruffin has gotten there, and he says, hey, it's my time. It's my time to shine, and he, he is definitely taking advantage of it, definitely taking advantage of the situation and making his program, his Miles team, the bigger program. And now here's the thing. With the, with the uh, HBCUs teaming up with ESPN, and now a lot of these games are televised, now you're on a national spotlight. You, you know, for years, uh, SIAC has been regional recruiting. Now you're going to find somebody. You may find a gym out in California somewhere. You may find somebody out in Nebraska. You know, who knows? <laughs> but that's what this partnership does. That's what this partnership does, man. It, it opens up those recruiting doors. An outstanding partnership with ESPN. 52 to 17 on top. Wow. So, you know, look at this game and, you know, everything that, that, that came into it, and especially the way the, the game started for Tuskegee, Sylvester. You thought that may perhaps these two that Tuskegee was going to make it difficult for Miles. Well, Miles has completely controlled the second half with 31 points. You know, that's the the great benefit of a, of a halftime top talk to have a coach that come out there and motivate you do what we like to call dig into you behind that halftime i'm pretty sure coach ruffin went in there and said hey we are better than this team we're better than what we're showing now and then he gave that message to his team he gave this message to those young guys and they came out and they did exactly what they were supposed to do in the second half man and that's that is what makes a championship team that and, makes a championship team and then you look at the other side for willie slater it's going to be three and seven. You know, they still got a game against Alabama State, mm. and so these last six minutes, you know, how do you how do you you know get your team ready? Now you're going to, have to play a game in three weeks that obviously against Alabama State, but obviously that's going to be a, a tough situation there. When you know you, you know you 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 only won three games so far, and now you have to go up against an Alabama State team that's probably a little upset they're not playing for the SWAC title. Yeah, and you know, but the thing is, in a game like that. That tur turkey day game, you, 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 do, you do what they call you throw the records out. It, it doesn't matter what that three and seven record or the fact that uh, Alabama State isn't in it for the for the uh, for the swag title. It doesn't matter. This is bad blood. This is years right. of bad yes, blood. You know, so. so it doesn't matter. That rivalry reigns supreme, and so now you have to get your guys back together. Everybody has to dig back in. Everybody has to dig back in. And, and next week, I'm pretty sure, next week, they're not going to take the week off. Right. But next week will be super light. 
They will. It'll be a lot of mental drills next week. It'll be a lot of let's get our mind back right. We're going to go shorts and shoulder pads. We're going to get our bodies feeling a little bit better because we got three weeks to play. You know, we don't play the Thanksgiving. So yeah. let's get our mind back right. Let's get our mind and our body back, and then we're going to go out there and we're going to hit it hard. It's certainly not a usual year for Tuskegee. Three and seven. They're used to playing for championships and having big years and playing in the playoffs, but that will not be the case this year. We got a flag on the play. That pass incomplete to Alexander Mitchell, the tight end. Yeah, that's one of those what we like to call backup flags. You know, you get a backup player in there, not used to that spotlight, kind of showing why he isn't started. You know, you got out there, you got a hold in the pass interference, and it kind of unnecessary because the ball was going to be way overthrown, but yet you still managed to get a holding penalty in there. You look at the, the the season as a whole, you know, Albany State, Savannah State, Fort Valley State were right there in the mix for the title. And then Morehouse kind of jumped in with that win over Fort Valley State. So the East had a terrific season um, playing, this, playing this year. Yeah, strong season out of the East, you know, and I didn't expect. When I saw Morehouse beat Fort Valley, I was oh, oh. I saw Morehouse beat Fort Valley. I was like, wait a minute, what, 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 what am I looking at here? What? It was a, quite a day there for Morehouse, the 51-3 to win three weeks ago. It, it just just really didn't um, – Fort, Fort Valley State never really got out of the block. Mm -hmm. you know, this Tuskegee team, you, know, you look at the last two losses, they lose to Kentucky State. The week before, they lose to Lane for the first time ever. ever. So, you know, not only do you have the, the record, but you have the teams that you normally beat consistently. Mm -hmm. You lost those games this year. So, you know, Kentucky State's getting better. Lane certainly having a good year. Uh, the West is not easy anymore. As that pass is incomplete. Pritchard again as they try to go deep. And it's going to be third down. And, you know, this is kind of what I spoke about earlier. Um, a little bit of parity is coming, you know. At one point in time, at one point in time, Tuskegee, you know, they got those, they got the, the, the better recruits. I mean, let's just be honest. They got the better players. If you wasn't going to Alabama, you didn't go to Alabama State, you know, Tuskegee was right there for you, you know. So they got the better recruits, but now everything's digital. Everybody recruits know. Now they know about a Kentucky State. You know, you may live in southern Florida, and you probably never would have went to Kentucky State 20 years ago, definitely 30 years ago. Right. But now you say, hey, well, wait a minute. There's a team up there in Frankfurt I can go to. And now with the expansion of the SAI, SAI I mean, I'm sorry. SIAC. SIAC. I'm sorry, I got touched That's what this out. league is called. <laughs> you know, with the expansion, you know, you bring it, you know, Savannah State came back. You're bringing in Edward Waters. You're bringing in Allen University. Now you got a whole new recruiting ground, you know, Benedict's going to have to struggle against Allen. Benedict's going to have to struggle against Allen starting to get players now. You know, Edward Waters, they're coming in there. They're going to get some of those Florida guys. They're going to say, well, Edward Waters isn't in NAIA anymore. So we can get, you know, we can play Division II ball. So you're going to start to see that landscape start to change over the next couple of years. It's Tuskegee, your days are just pure dominance. <laughs> oh, it's... Times are changing. That pass complete over the middle to Montreville, his second catch of the game. You know, and, and that's the thing about it, too. You know, we talk about conference realignment. That's been the big talk for this last two or three months. All these teams moving around. We've had some teams move to the, to the Sun Belt and Conference USA and Division One, But now you've got Allen Edward Waters coming in uh, to the SIAC and really kind of adding to that. Like you talk about Edward Waters. Not just not just go join the SIAC, but becoming a university mm -hmm. instead of just being a college. So that just brings uh, so much more uh, cachet to the SIAC. It does, man. It makes it's you know it strengthens the conference so much as a whole, man. And, and that is just so huge and so big, you know. To you know, you get sometimes if if you're known as a college, a, a university. On paper, it, it, you know, it kind of sounds better on right. paper. It sounds better on paper. And so it's just a huge thing for Edward Waters to pick up and then you bringing them into the conference. These Florida kids, these Florida kids who would who would skip over Edward Waters because they were in NAIA, 
Now they're Division Two. Now they're right. moved up, man. They're playing in. The, they're playing in the SIAC. So now, wait a minute. They're going to start thinking about. Let's go on to Jacksonville. Let's, right. Exactly. And, and I'm telling. If you're trying to sell it, it makes it a whole lot easier to sell that 18 year old coming to Edward Waters. So man, this is. I I am just so excited for the future. And like I said, with the partnership with ESPN, what's going to happen? You're going to start to go down these rosters, and you're going to see some kids from Texas. You're going to see some kids <laughs> from, from Michigan or North Dakota somewhere. You know, you, you're going to – because they know that they're going to be on TV. Right. I know mom's going to see me. I know grandma's going to see me. So now you're going to start to see an influx of kids coming from all over, and that's only going to make the conference stronger. And, and, and just the – not just the parity, but the improvement of the teams in the league. We talk about Savannah State, you know, coming in, they had, you know, Division One talent, so you kind of expected them to be a little bit better than they were, but uh, as that pass is caught by Pritchett, that's the second catch, uh, that's going to be a late hit. Yeah, he kind of lowered that shoulder toward the end. He lowered that shoulder in that white zone, so they go call that penalty. <laughs> hey, but I like the athleticism of Pritchett. You know, yeah. he took the hit and he jumped over the sign. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's the Tuskegee football team, the, the 30 conference championships, the 12 HBCU national championships. There's so much tradition and history, not just for that football team, but as the campus as a whole, just yes. a historic school. And uh, now you've got Miles that is really taking that, that, like I said, taking that next step into getting into that mold of uh, thinking about, when you think about the SIAC, you're thinking about Tuskegee, you're thinking about Albany State. Now you got to think about Savannah State also, and now Miles has kind of jumped into that mix a little mm -hmm. bit. They, they've jumped into that mix, and they've asserted themselves. They're going to be a force, man. Here it comes Goodlow. Goodlow got into the end zone. Oh, they're gonna, oh we got a flag now. It's going to probably come back. That bothers me, man. I, I like to see the big guy get in the end zone, man. Good low. Not your, not your traditional-looking running back, no. you know, to, to say the least. It's not a traditional-looking running back. But I like to see the big guys get to the end zone, man. 5'9", 219. I think they're a little, uh, I think they're a little, uh, they were a little generous to him on that one. I think, uh, I mean, I think he's got a few more on there. but I'm, I'm telling you, he's, he's a little bit uh, he's a little bit shorter than that or he yeah. weighs a lot more than that. But, uh, Again, Reginald Ruffin. You know, if you're a coach in this situation, you just want your team to finish strong. Yeah, you know, you, most important thing, you want to be healthy because you got a championship game next week. But, you know, Coach Ruffin, they're going to find any kind of edge. Any, all these, you know, you know, it's always, you know, it's all about the coaches. You know, you won 66-3. Yeah, but we turned the ball over two times. You know, it's always something that the coach has to give that team that edge. Here comes Goodlow, and Goodlow gets into the end zone. Tuskegee finally scores in this fourth quarter. I wouldn't be dancing right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's trailing here by uh, 29, so no, yeah, not well, day. you know, whatever. <laughs> I guess he just figures I gotta do it. You know, somebody said, man, you score a touchdown, act like you've been there before. But somebody brought up a good point. What if you've never been there? <laughs> <That's true. laughs> what, if, what if you've never been there? Uh, you know, right. you, you might as well enjoy it, you yes. know? I want to, you know, Tuskegee, yeah, they're lining up for an extra point. Uh, they don't have, apparently they don't have the holder <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah, you kind of need that if you're going to kick an extra point. So good low. We'll enjoy that. And uh, we'll give bit. Tuskegee. I'm a little bit jealous of good, well, good low, man. <laughs> a man scored a touchdown, and he had that lovely mane of hair up there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, you got a guy, you got a guy like me. I like to say this is a shaved head, not bald. <laughs> right. Shaved. It's exactly. a difference. It's a difference. Yeah. Shaved head. Right. But that young man right there, man, has that mane flowing back there, man. Hey. So that was a delayed game there against the uh, Golden Tigers. So they will kick the extra point from five yards further back. Extra point Ooh. is up. It was close. And, uh. I don't know if they gave it to him. They gave, I thought he might. Have, I thought he might have missed it. No good. <laughs> there you go. It is no, no good. good. So 52-23 remains the score. So a uh, wild season in the SIAC. We saw you know Albany State kind of uh, take the mantle there, and they, they've got a great opportunity to make some noise in the playoffs. 
and then this 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 West Division where it really came down to the final game, where where you had three teams with a chance to win a championship, and then you had Savannah State and Fort Valley State as well. This was kind of a a strange season in the SIAC with all the teams with a chance to to play for the title. And, and here's the interesting thing too about Savannah State on kind of on the outside looking in. You you mentioned it earlier. They actually have a chance to make the playoffs. So, you know, you're keeping your fingers crossed if you're Savannah State because if Savannah State, they want Albany State to go in there and just blow the wheels off, <laughs> right. off of Miles next right. week because if Miles comes in and Miles wins, then that means Albany State may have a chance to make the playoffs, but that Savannah State definitely won't make the playoffs. <laughs> right. So, you know, you're Savannah State. You want Albany State to go out there and just blow out Miles next week. So it's it's it's, it's been a strange season. But but what can you expect the year after right. COVID? <laughs> right. what, what can you expect the year after Corona? You know? It's been, a, you know, it's, it's crazy. You know, some teams got to play last spring. But, you know, for the teams that didn't play, mm -hmm. you know, two years being off, especially for teams like Miles and Albany State, to play in this type of uh, environment and to thrive in the type of environment has to say a lot about the coaching staffs mm -hmm. and all the players who had to, to work so diligently to get back on the field. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't know what that does to – you've been playing this game since you were probably 10. Some, some of these, these kids played six years old now. <laughs> right. You know, they've been playing every fall, you know, their whole life. And then for something to come through and it just throws everything off a of track. Now, you give so much credit to these coaches for maintaining the mental focus that these kids have to have, maintaining, maintaining that so they can stay together mentally to come back on the field. Because physically, you know, they're kids. They're 18, 19, 20 right. years old. They, they're going to be in the gym. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? They're going to sit up there and they can, you know, they're going to work out and not gain any weight or whatever. They're going to do all of that physically. But to keep them mentally strong, man, you want to give that up to, to Coach Ruffin and his, his staff, man, what they did just to keep his guys mentally prepared for a chance to go back to, to a conference championship. And for Coach Gabe Giardina at Albany State as well, to get their team back in the SIAC championship game for a third straight year, that also says a lot about his coaching staff and what, and you know, going through the COVID protocol and missing the season last year. And now you've got a great, potentially a great championship game coming up next Saturday. Yeah, I think it should be exciting, man, because you know these kids from Miles. They remember that butt cut. Yes. <laughs> they they <laughs> remember that butt cut, and I'm pretty sure they've watched that film. You know, Coach Ruffin has probably slid that film in during film sessions, <laughs> right. getting prepared for other games. <laughs> You know, if it, if it was me, I would have I would have the score posted in the locker room. You know, just posted up there. Let it be the first thing that these young men see every time they enter the football the football building. It's been the fourth straight win for Miles. It'll be the third straight win over Tuskegee. Tuskegee was actually going for program win number seven hundred, but they have to wait a while for that. And for Willie Slater. Uh, he'll have to wait for his 124th win, but this will be the third straight year that Tuskegee misses the title game. They hadn't been since 2017. They beat Fort Valley State at Fort Valley. I like the fact that they're playing the championship game on campus. I think it really yes. gives a great chance for the whole school to really showcase their campus and also uh, gives the folks a chance that may not be able to go to a neutral site mm -hmm. to go to a place that's a little bit closer as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you can assure that you're going to have a good crowd if you have that championship game at a, at a home field. Now, it, I, feel, I feel two ways about it. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I feel two ways about it because if you're the guys in Albany State, you say, man, we played a heck of a year, man. Yes. We beat, we, we we whipped these guys' butts early in the year. <laughs> Why do we have to go to their house? But, hey, it's a rotating schedule, you know, and it's, it's not that far of a drive. Come right. on, let's be honest. Uh, Albany State, Albany State from here, it, from here, I mean, from, from, from Albany to Miles, you know, it's not that big of a drive. Go ahead, get your team together. Let's rent a couple of buses. Let's get out there. <laughs> let's get out there and support the, support the school. 114 yards rushing for Dante Edwards. Chris Brown with a pair of touchdowns today. Claude Newell 13-20 for 225 and two scores. It was a tough day on the other side. Bryson Williams had that 73-yard run, but that was it as the clock ticks down here and Miles will win 
the SIAC championship for the third consecutive year, the SIAC West title. Once again, going through Fairfield Sloan Alumni Stadium, Miles with a 52 to 23 win over Tuskegee as the clock continues to wind down. Head coach Reginald Ruffin and his uh -oh. <laughs> this time he couldn't avoid it as uh, the, the, the the as he looks back with disgust as he'll uh, talk to his former uh, boss there and Willie Slater and uh, Miles 52 to 23. So back to inside the broadcast location, Kamari Darrington, along with Sylvester Williams and. Well, Sylvester, we came into the set, came into halftime, and it was a four-point game. Miles had to had to come out in the second half and really uh, take care of business, as, as, as Reginald Ruffin said they had to do to to uh, get out that first possession, and, and they really uh, handled things very well in the second half. You know, they came and did what you expect out of a championship team. They came and did what we like to call put the foot down. They came and put the foot down. They understood, hey. We're better than this team. This game should not be this close. We need to come out here and do what we are prepared to do, and they did it. They they forced their will on Tuskegee. And the first of Tuskegee, just the miscues, especially the the, 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 the punts that, 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 that mm -hmm. got rolled down on the one-yard line. Yes. They, they had the, the bad snap that, that was recovered for a touchdown, and then Tuskegee never got the lead back. And then just things in the second half, the penalties that they just could not find a way to get themselves back into the football game. So if you're Willie Slater, of course, you got a game in three weeks. You know, how do you just prepare your team now for uh, a game uh, against an Alabama State where, you know, obviously you have an opportunity to finish your season off with a win? You know, you have to let your team know the reason we lost, the reason we're in the situation we're in is because self-inflicted wounds. It's because what we did to ourselves. You know, we should be a better team than what we are. If we knock out the small mental errors and just small little mistakes, we will be a much better team. So next week, hey, we're going to go. We're going to watch this film. We're going to watch these little things we did wrong. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk about why we did these things wrong. And then the week after, we're going to go out and throw on some pads. Right. We're going to throw out. We're going to hit somebody. You know, we're going we're gonna to put our hands in the dirt. We're going to line up, and we're going to hit. And then that last week, now we'll go ahead and we'll get ready for we'll get ready for Alabama State so we can put on a show for and that's gonna be a jam packed crowd. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's gonna everybody's gonna be full off their turkey yeah, yeah. dinner. You know they're gonna be out there. The band will be rocking. The we got coach here. All right. So the head coach of the Miles Golden Bears, Reginald Ruffin, coach again. Congratulations on. Uh, beating Tuskegee, number one, but number two, winning the SIAC West. Uh, just talk about how your kids played in the second half and what this win means to you and your program. Well, you know, it's big for us, you know, to, to have a chance to three-peat, uh, to win the West. You know, I've been here 10 seasons as head coach. We played nine out of the last 10 years for the West Division title, and now we have one in actually six years out of 10 times playing it. So I'm excited. Now it's on to this big one. That's the ones that count. So, uh Albany State is a very good football team, and we got to get ready for a great football team. You know, I got a question. What, what did you tell your team? What did you tell your team at halftime going in? Because it was such a close game, four-point game at halftime. And when they came out that second half, it's like they just they were a completely different team that second half. And they just like what I like to say, they put their foot down in that second half. But what did you tell those guys? Well, was a tale of two halves. You know, we talk about setting the table. The table was set the first half. You know, we were shooting ourselves in the foot with a pass interference. Call that was a big interception. You know, and then some few penalties that kind of hurt us. But then, you know, I told the guys to settle down. They hadn't stopped us offensively. We just stopping ourselves, you know, and uh, you know, just come out the second half and just play Miles College football. And you can see what happened. These guys really uh, stayed the course and, and they put points on the board. Defense did a good job up to that last series of uh, giving that last touchdown. But it was out the penalties and that's what's been shooting us in the foot. When we get penalties, we hadn't been able to just, you know, come back from that. And then it's been costing us touchdowns or points. And then, of course, you know, after not having a season last year, the comeback this year uh, as the defending champions, I don't know how you felt about that going into the season, but uh, just uh, what does it say for you, your coaching staff and your players, that they were able to persevere through everything with COVID and to come back and now have a chance to play for another championship? 
Well, we got everybody best, and you guys seen that. When we lost to Albany, we got their best. We lost to Benedict. We got their best and went to the wire with uh, Lane College. We got their best and, and went to the wire with Kentucky State. We got their best and went to Elwood Waters and got their best. And we just got the best of Tuskegee the first half. So everybody's been bringing their best. So we done, we done we're staying all the challenges. So now it's time for us, you know, to three-peat, and that's our goal. That's been our goal. It's been in reach. You know, we was our back was against the wall. But our kids, man, they just stayed the course. And I'm proud of our coaches. Man, I'm proud of our kids. Um, you know, they're resilient. Uh, we've been through a lot. They're having our fifth-screen quarterback to start the lane game and help us win. And he's been out, out after that. So uh, it's been tough, man. But uh, it's just resilience in these guys, and I'm, I'm proud of them. Coach, thank you so much for your time, and coach, congratulations. Before, before you get out of here, Coach, now, before you get out of here, one quick question. Now, I know you played a little bit of linebacker in your day, but we've been watching these uh, Gatorade dumps. Are you sure you didn't play running back the way you've been avoiding these Gatorade these past two years, Coach? You got quick feet over there. They call me too sweet, baby. I'm too sweet. And so I told him, I, I told him, go and get the GSC sack record, man. I said, I got sacks for a reason. I got those quick steps, brother. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Take care and good luck next Saturday. Thank you, guys. All right. That's head coach Reginald Ruffin of the Miles College Golden Bears. So Miles takes care of business here. They win their third consecutive SIAC West title, 52-23 over Tuskegee. Congratulations to the Golden Bears. Good luck to the next week as they take on Albany State. For Sylvester Williams and our crew that did a terrific job here today, I'm Kamari Darrington saying so long from Fairfield, Alabama. You've been watching SIAC football on ESPN. Next week is the SIAC championship game. <laughs>